and they said it's saying this and they sent me a screenshot so i tried it and it did the same thing to me and uh, it just did it again on this live but then when i went down to where it says share and i shared that link it worked so if you're having trouble getting here i don't i don't know what to tell you because I, I can't fix that but i think it's only happening for people that maybe aren't subscribed I, I don't know but like i took the link straight out of my browser on the computer which it works but for some reason to get like it wouldn't pull up unless i hit share for somebody else i just heard a little ding i'm not letting you up <laughs> oh well hello me ian wilson huh yeah that's me but that's not me wonky <laughs> Bro, man, that's something else. Let me bring that up. That's something else I'm pissed off about is Ruski. Ruski, yeah, I, I've been, hell, I was bored. I was, I had to be fucking really bored to watch your shit. Like, I had played all the fucking uh, Star Wars and Red Dead Redemption I wanted to play. So, I decided, I, I meant to fucking watch The Sopranos, and you happen to be one of the ones I got. I saw you was live. So I watch you, and, like, bruh, what in the fuck? Who do you think you are, man? Like, number one, I ain't been talking about you. I ain't been online. And you going to talk shit about, call me a beta. Say, no, that's what betas do. Like, you know what? That's why we finna play that shit right now. That one shit. You want to you wanna do that shit? Like, you going to call me a beta. And, and, and I'm not... Don't get it twisted, Wonka. I ain't triggered. What it is, is you've already tried to blame me for Docs and Andrea's kids. You... Hold on, Brownie. You already, uh... Tried to, uh... Say that... You know, you were saying... Basically, to the effect that you do things one way, which is supposedly like an alpha way of looking at things, and I do them the beta way. That's basically what you said in a nutshell. All right. Are you fucking serious? You literally, you called yourself a toxic, you called yourself toxic masculinity, right? But yet, for someone that's so sigma, or, you know, so alpha, let me put it that way. I don't know why I said sigma. Anyway, for someone so alpha, you... <laughs> Where is that fucking video, man? Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Hold on. I'm on the wrong history. There it is. Shit. Every time. I open up a new browser or change it or something. I don't know why, but this program, it I got to reset it. Like, now, when it's reset that one time, now I'm good. I ain't got shit to worry about. It'll work. But if I change it up and redo it, then I got to redo that too. It's fucking weird. It ain't supposed to be like that. No, I didn't see what happened to April, and I really don't, and, and I'm not talking about April. I ain't got nothing wrong with April. This is a no drama live. Whatever happened to her, I pray she's okay. Like, no, like I haven't been on here. 
but I can't imagine it's going to be anything in a nice way you're going to mention. If there's a mod down there and he starts talking shit or saying something, you know, that you wouldn't like, take him out. I can't right now. I'm doing something. We're going to look at this. Yeah, so Ruski, a little meltdown. Man, I obviously you two had like a most of the together or some shit. Yeah, Tell me how alpha this is, bro. <laughs> she picked it. She picked it. I, I paid, but she picked it. And how did that turn out? Obviously, how long ago was that? Can I ask you how long ago that was? Uh, that was May second. Uh, but we talked like, like we oh, talked. me, yeah. Okay, man. But we talked. We like we were cl we were close, close. We talked every single day for hours we on end. August, September, November, December. Well, and maybe it's been a while. Is that the last time you what talked? You playing it's under the covers no, 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 for, Brownie? Oh shit! Well then, fuck okay. your life. I didn't know you were talking to each other on the phone. When Cut a blanket phone over his head, you. playing, running around. Like, like hours, hours every single day, hours. Well then, fucking what the hell? What the fuck was I missing? Yeah, I, I didn't that know that. But at the same what? time, I was trying to fucking you know, I was I, I'm not getting into any of that stuff. Like a situation, I'm just not publicly. Not no, that's not that's not what you do. You two were talking hours on the phone with every fucking day. Yeah. I have the phone right I mean, like the fact that you did not. Yeah, I'd consider myself a friend to April, you know, so I, you know, so I'm not going to be taught. That would be something that would, that needs to be. That's why I've always advocated um, for certain people that are cool. Thing is, though, we got to know that everyone's cool. That uh, if we need to talk or whatever, we need to do like a conference call, Zoom, hell, a private live. Or hell, we don't even have to go live. You can, uh, you can use StreamYard. You can use a studio and hand the link out. You know, but you, you got to be able to trust that ain't nobody gonna hand that link out to, or ain't gonna record it or anything like that. You know, but that'd be the way to address things between people that are, you know, friends. Man, you can go fuck yourself for that. I love you, but you can fuck yourself. What the fuck, dude? I told you we were close. No, you did. You I said you, you did not tell me that. I didn't say that. Part, I know. We were close. Fuck you off, guy. Well, see, how do you know all this? Because, I mean, no offense, but, well, I really don't care. But you don't look like a Gene team member to me unless you are on an alt. I said we were close. I said we were very close. I didn't say, I didn't give you detail, but I said we were close. I don't care. I'm done. I'm done. I have been sitting here. I hadn't been on any other apps or anything. I've been busy. Like, we've had people uh, out and they're uh, going out and everything else. Okay, April, put a video up. Okay. All right. I hear you. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. So, that's all I got to say on that talking to you for how many fucking hours about this right a while and i didn't want to talk about it you wanted to what talk about tell it. me that all right now, i mean that's what we're gonna do and you gonna go bye bye look i done said that this is no drama live so you know unless you're a you know if you're not a gene team member then i don't want to hear you talk i got nothing to talk to you about concerning anything of that do you understand me all right. You want to say something? Fine. But if you're going to be disrespectful or try to say or insinuate something or trying to get information, like, I I'm not going to talk to you. Exactly, Dana. You know, if it, if it ain't got nothing to do with me, then I ain't got nothing to talk about with it. And if I did want to talk about it with it, it sure the hell wouldn't be with these giblets. Nor, no offense, because I two sickies hadn't done anything 
wrong so far, but I don't know who they are. So, I mean, you know, I'm not going to. I probably have said too much in just a little bit of acknowledging and stuff that I have, you know. So, again, I'm going to play this video to roast Brewski's ass. And we're going to move on from this subject unless some Gene team members want to come in here. But like I said, this ain't the time and the place to talk about that. Well, that makes you a dick. Okay? All right? Bye. Right? Yeah, bye. That was, that was gross. Like, dude, like, like, why was I fucking... Hey, Ruski. Bruh. Over here, bruh. Stop looking over there. Well, what do you mean? I don't know why it changes things. Why, why does it change things? Because you didn't tell me that. Had I known, you fucking weirdo. Come on. Does not make you a weirdo? This doesn't change anything. Dude. Oh my god. It does. I don't see it, but okay. I don't. I don't know what you. I don't know what kind of realm you're living in in your fucking brain. Okay, but you fucking made like it's it, it, okay. I'm gonna say. I told you I liked her a lot. I, no, 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 you didn't say shit. You did not give me the full details, and you know you didn't. Stop. You're not, you're not entitled to it. Stop, Bruce, stop. You're not entitled to it. Looking at us. I don't want to talk about it. Bruce, you're, you're not entitled to it. You're and trying to fucking Oh, fingers. he's putting his foot down. He's like, one, I don't want to talk about it. Two, you're not entitled to it. <laughs> well, you're still talking about it. Ugly. Tell you're trying to fucking. You're trying to. No, you can't. Now he's smiling because he secretly likes this, I think. Dude, yeah, I can't because it's not business. You're not entitled to me. I sat there and I had your back. I kept telling you, it's none of your business, but I don't want to talk about it. You're not entitled to me. You did not give me the full story. Fuck you. Because I said it's none of your business. Fuck you. Fuck you. Well, she no. obviously thinks it does because you obviously talk and get and listen to her open up about shit. So that's the problem with, with sometimes with friends is that one thinks, you know, you're this cool and the other one, like, instead of being up front and being like hey we're not that cool they'll let you go on and think that but really they ain't been to talk to you and treat you like the way you're willing to talk to them and that's obviously the problem here ruski you dumbass over and over again i don't want to talk no, over and over. No, you didn't. no you didn't no you didn't no you didn't yes, yes, you did not you literally that's why that whole like people can be neutral sure could somebody be friends with somebody that's not fr i'll tell you this there was a in my original graduating class, there was a dude I fucking hated. All right. His name started with an R. That's all I'm saying. And I hated him. All right. His dad was the fucking uh, principal and was my grandmother's boss. And that whole family was dicks. I'm telling you. I mean, and he was a dick. And one of my best friends. He was friends with him, like would go out on, you know, I, I'd go with him on vacations and stuff too, trips, parties, and he would do stuff with the other dude. Now, there were some activities like a thing at church that we volunteered at one time and other things like I would be there and he'd be and we all. But even then, my interaction with him was like nil to none. And at school is where we would have, you know, those encounters were what made me want not ever like him. Well, as I got older and finally got into middle school, I still, you know, didn't like him, but it had been years and long gone since we really ever had, you know, some, anything negative. And that's just the way sometimes that shit works. Uh, so, in theory, is it possible? Yeah. The problem is, though, is that some of us are dealing with stuff on here we don't like. And, you know, when people are trying to, to go that way and be like that, it creates a conflict. Because then you can't share and be as i mean you might some people might and some, some people might you know try to extend the trust that they can but at the same time you're taking a risk because you don't know if the other person that you know you're enemies with 
can ever coax that person into spilling any of that. So, I mean, that, that, that's the issue, with, you know, and some people might say, oh, well, if you worry about that, then you're insecure. You probably shouldn't be. Well, I mean, that's the whole point. Like, that's what I'm saying. So it, it really, it just depends. I mean, it really does. Like I said, I was friends with somebody who was friends with somebody I never liked, you know, but on another note, that person wasn't doing fucked up shit to me. Like, to the extent of that you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about concerning here. There's a kind of a major difference there. Carly told me, not even fucking five minutes ago, okay? It's okay, Ruski, don't worry about it. Just go, like, you're, you're both fucking, you know what? I, I, I'm going to say this at this point, you're, you're more, um... What's the word? What's the best way of putting this? Oh, shit, I can't find the word. I think I think that you're you're more fucked up than she is. Okay, risky. Now I gotta, you know, as much as I know, Andrea has probably talked shit about me. I gotta agree with uh, who is Ta Miss Tanya? Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know, lady, but uh. I don't have no, you know, disrespect for her either. So, yeah, I got to agree with Miss Tanya on that. Like, because, like, that whole time, I thought I knew you guys. I don't. I'm like, like fucking buy it, okay? Just go. Fucking Merry Christmas, but, dude, I fucking talked to you for like two hours about her. And I'm like, you're like, well, yup, she's this, she's that. So, like, like, right yep. there, he. he, he See, now he's starting to get mad right there. You can see the little twitch in his facial, on his, in his body language. Because he knows that the repercussions of what she's saying is basically that he sat on a phone for two hours and listened to Andrea basically get trashed on and probably cooperated and, like, you know, participated in it. So he's about to get mad. Guy, why didn't you just say? No, oh, actually, uh, you talked for two hours. I just sat there and listened. Watch your stream. Oh, okay. You did. You did. See, right there. Tell me, I, and, and people are gonna try to say I can't read body language. Shit. Say a goddamn word. Okay, bullshit. bullshit. I mean, it is a little hard with him when it comes to his eyes, but other than that, I mean, you know, he's not covering his face up or anything, so it's it's pretty readable. Talk about it. Oh, okay. Dude, I don't want to. I don't want to be at odds with you. I'm just saying that it was kind of fucking cunty. Yeah. No, mind your own fucking business. Stop talking about my shit. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not talking about your shit. Let's stop. All right, so let's change the subject. Right. All right, let's change it. God, I'm trying to do that with you. Okay, okay. All right. He's got his I mean, arms just, crossed. I, you know what? I, let me apologize because. Yeah, you should. Fuck you. Fuck you. All right, Ruski. I know your goddamn business. I was trying to be a bigger person. Okay, it seems when he gets angry, the right eye is looking straight forward towards the where the person would be, and the lazy eye is locked on at a, I'd say maybe a 45 degree angle to the left. Mind your goddamn business! Shut up! Ass Open ass! I was trying to fucking say something. You shut your cocksucker! Shut the fuck up! You're not stronger than I am. You're not louder than I am. You're not gonna win the fucking conversation. So is this what an alpha does, Ruski? You know, because what a real man would do probably right now would be respectfully bow out. You know, any other time you don't mind backstaging motherfuckers at your will. Hell, you do it just to fuck with people. And you wonder why people don't like you. Shut the fuck, Shut the fuck up! Dude, what are you Shut up, Bobby, don't shut up. Ruski, Shut up, Bobby, don't make Shut your fucking mouth! Shut your fucking mouldy. mouth! Shut your fucking mouth! Shut your fucking mouth! Shut your fucking mouth! Shut your fucking mouth! The last the stream of yours that I watched, I think I seen you, like, backstage. And I'm talking about girls. It's not like it was me or some dudes. Like, you was backstage and women. Back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Shut the fuck up, woman! Oh, see, there we go. That's called the misogyny. Shut the fuck up, man! Shut the 
fuck off. Fuck you. Fuck you. Okay, all right. Well, what do you have to say? Like, let's just like calm it down. You change the subject. I'll fucking listen. Wow. Okay. Well, I cannot. Change the fucking subject. You shut the fuck up. Change the fucking subject. I'll fucking listen. So he basically wants to sit there. He, he, he's trying to control her, make him, her entertain him in some way, but on a different subject because he's triggered. Like, he's so triggered, he's clenching every uh, muscle and orifice that he has right now. What? You, you know what? Like, Don't what? Like, Don't what? Like, Don't Don't like, 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 you black fucking whore. All right, cunt. No, don't fuck you me. Shut the fuck up. Change the goddamn subject. Do not call me. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Change the goddamn subject, you fucking cut. Oh my god. Get risky, get risky. No, fuck you. Change the goddamn subject. I'll jump through the speed and choke your fucking bitch ass. I'm sorry, guy. Like, change the subject. Would you just. I am changing. Shut the fuck up. Wow, guy. Bruh, that is a whole level. Hold on. We got to get a clear. There we go. Got it clear. Ruski, that'd be a hallmark. That's a hallmark moment right there, my bro. I'm talking about hallmark card level meme status right there. Would you just I'm gonna try to get you at a few other good angles too. That that's all right. Well, no, that one sucks. I am changing. Shut the fuck up. Now, now that, there we go. Now that's that's a that's a hallmark moment right there. What do you think, Brownie? You think it's a hallmark moment? Wow, guy. Back to the subject. Hey. Or you're gonna piss me the fuck off. You are not. You know, you actually, Ruski, might beat Brownie in the Christmas cards this year. I'm gonna send out. Not Christmas cards. Excuse me. <laughs> Christmas already happened. What the fuck am I saying? Um, I am consistent. <laughs> Had I sent some cards or plan on sending just like some just you know seasonal cards. I guarantee you, if I sent if I had sent the cards of a brownie out freshly grown, you you might beat them. Go away! I do it. I don't sit here and listen. It's so hard to get a good freeze frame photo. Some people make it look so easy how they do it. Whoops. Yeah. Wow, guy. Okay. Okay. The faces of Ruski. Great, okay, guy. Like, fucking, will you call Shut up. Up. Okay, I'm gonna kick you the fuck out because you're, you're No, bad. you're not gonna kick me the fuck out. You're gonna change the subject, bitch. No, change it. No, and I'm not a bitch. Well, shut the fuck up. I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want on my channel. And I am gonna kick you out. Fuck. Like, Ruski, I, I, I no, don't know shut what up. Do shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Dude, we already went over this. I am shutting the fuck up. I'm listening to you, guy. Are you okay, guy? Like, dude, I'm, I'm really. I'm really, I don't even give a fuck anymore. I'm not going to kick you out until you, like, I, like, I didn't know that you were going to lose your shit like that. God damn. You goddamn stupid to kick me off your fucking screen. I didn't do that. Because you don't know how. What, what, you want me to, no, I, I can kick you out. I, did, I decided not to, but I, I made the decision to not. Do you want me to kick you out, guy? Go do you want me to kick you out, Ruski? What the fuck what you do? Ruski, are you okay? Yeah, Ruski, you okay? I don't give a fuck. No, I'm not in there. I'm not talking about it. You're going to change the fucking subject. Damn. No, I'm not. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Change the subject. Talking about something else. You look like a chipmunk yeah, when that freeze frame is there. Like, no, I'm not. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I gotta get a good one. Like, Ruski, are you okay? I can get angrier if you don't change the goddamn subject. Okay, all right, all right. I, I, like, Ruski, are you okay? I can get angrier. <laughs> Even if it's blurry, it fucking still is him. If you don't change the goddamn subject.
That's pretty good. Oh, I'm gonna fuck you up with names, Risky. Okay, all right, all right. I understand that you're angry. I but like, AJ, shut up. <laughs> okay, all right. I don't know what to say. I'm just gonna let it go as is, and I'm gonna go real small. Oh, this is priceless right here. Like that look. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, that's enough right there, probably. In a second. Oh, his what? eyes are straight for once. Scream some more. Oh, and now it's done went lazy. It didn't last long. Oh, they're straight again. Right there. His so when he looks to the right, guys, his eyes line up like a normal person. What happened to you? Tell me he's gonna go off some more. Like, dude, I had your fucking back. I was like, oh, is that what you're I changed the subject. You well, shouldn't we... have had my back because we shouldn't have been talking about it in the first place. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, that I done went lazy again. Why do you have my back? Why don't you think you can have my back? Sucking on the dick around right there, Brian. Yeah, yeah Rufy. Don't have my back. What are you talking about? Shut the fuck up. Stop yeah. You do have some white teeth, Rusky. I'll give you that. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. It's none of your fucking business. Never ask me a question about her again. Oh, we got another rare photo of the eyes straight. We have learned the secret, y'all. Right, when he looks to the right. Again. It was nice knowing you, you fucking whore. Get out of here. Fuck I'm not life. fucking leaving, bitch. I'm not red. He said, I'm, I'm not fucking leaving, leaving bitch. I'll give him a baseball bat. I'll be back later. I don't give a fuck about you. You can go fuck yourself, cunt. I ain't leaving. Well, I don't give a fuck. Stop screaming. Shut up. See, that's what he'd be like in real life. life. If, if a girl what told him to leave, he'd be like, fuck you. I ain't leaving. Shut up. 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 Like he's I fucking mean, ended. I'm still trying to fuck Oh my god, I don't want to think about it. Don't figure anything out. Move no, right no, the fuck. No. Tell me what the fuck I did to you. Tell me what I did. Nothing. You questioned it too much. You poked and bought it and you made me talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it with you, but you're a stranger and it's not your fucking business. Oh, uh, Rufy, well now you know what it feels like then, I guess, don't you, motherfucker? I, I know what you mean. But that is not the way you respond to it, my guy. I didn't even know you two were involved. Oh, yeah, I just don't know anything. You shouldn't know anything. So shut the fuck up about it. Fuck your life. Fuck your life. It's none fuck. of your fucking business. Fuck you. You're not entitled to anyone's life but your own. Stop pressing me. Why are you screaming? Shut the fuck up. Come on. Fuck about <laughs> You're the one screaming, I mean, motherfucker. You're just like, not? No. I, I will and I can't because you can't stop me. No one. Bro, you need your ass beat. If that was my daughter or something, man. It's okay. Like, scream. I don't give a fuck what you do. I don't care anymore. You acting like a kid. Like, I'll be back later. A kid I'm don't not... even do that, bro. I'm fucking listening to this fucking cunt scream for fucking ever. I'll be back when he goes away. I ain't leaving ever. 
Bye. Just bye, restart bye, the bye, stream. Bye. He'll leave. You do it. I didn't do shit to you. You're fucking losing your crap. Now I now I'm now I'm not fucking like I never was. Oh, there. Don't have an opinion about it. What are you not learning? Okay, don't, don't have an opinion about it. Stop terrible. talking about it. Move the oh, fuck on. It's none of your that. business. It will never be any of your business. You're not entitled to shit. Oh, listen, it's a dumb fucking trying to fucking put an opinion on something that doesn't matter to you. Okay, I'm gonna go. Shut up. You're minding, you're not your own business. That's I don't, I don't. Sorry, guys. I haven't had the chat on. My bad. Let me look at it. Why are you yelling at me? I don't. Why are you yelling at me? All right, all right, all right, all right. Risky, 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 risky. We, we were, we decided to that it didn't work out. Now it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. We, 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 no. Hold on, right, spokesman. You. you don't have a That's room. Friend, you're the best idiot. Hold on. This is about over. Let me give y'all a wrench. Ever. Can you go? Uh, go on your own. Oh, right? Fucking make me. I'm in your fucking oh. face. Make no. me leave. Okay, all right, all right. I can fucking do Fucking make me leave, bitch. Okay. You ain't I'm, doing I'm, shit. I'm doing it. 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 What the fuck did I fucking sit off in that fucker? I don't know what you meant, these giblets. I'm on my pants, nothing. Jeez, giblets said we know you moved. I don't know what you mean by I moved. I haven't. Chance anymore. I haven't and I work moved, for myself, doing. But I wouldn't mind moving either. I would not mind moving. I don't know why I cut that off. I didn't mean to. Fucking anonymous dude's live. I don't know why I cut that off. What the fuck? Oh, he's stream sniping me. mean to. The fuck are y'all doing, bro? You can't come on over here, AD, since you want to run that mouth and say, "Oh, I'm a scumbag." Yeah, I done had somebody tell me, bro. Sure did. I'm a scumbag, and I heard you try to say some shit about that I talked about, bro. We've been over this. When you came over here, and I apologized to you, but you keep still changing. You, you keep changing the context of what I had said to you. I was mad at you because you had let and you let stand somebody over in your chat that was talking about my mother and had the, the name is that and everything else. And I said, how would you like it if somebody said, Blah, blah, blah. And I said it uh, not with your mother. I said it to your, as your wife, about your wife. And you, you know, and then that's just So, I mean, I didn't say I was going to. I mean, now, if I'm lying, run it back then. Because I know what I said. And you people can sit there and talk about, I'm so emotional, I'm this and that. Yeah, well, you know what? I just got, and, and I've, I'm something I'm hearing about, people are calling me mentally retarded when I've never said such at all. Um, I have three mental afflictions, and I just did a personal history questionnaire 
and the uh, di the all the standard tests that you do whenever you get a new psychiatrist. And it turns out, like when I went to Kansas City after I had my suicide attempt, which, by the way, uh, I've heard about Martin loosely and all types of shit, but. And I did see, uh, because I'd actually subscribed to him. So I've seen some stuff that got posted. So I don't know about all of it, but I'll tell you this. Um, like, I actually did go, you know, like, I didn't think about it and stop. Like, I was under the influence of, um, uh, crap that I didn't even know. And end up basically having to have surgery and go to ICU and all that. So when they recommended me, you know, I, I couldn't believe what all that had happened. I was kind of in shock about it. So when they recommended me to go to one place, which is basically a place so I could get fully, you know, like you, I saw different doctors and then I saw um, a uh therapist type worker and an actual psychiatrist along with the team you know and I was there for I don't know 30 days exactly or 29 days exactly and I went voluntarily because I didn't uh, when they recommended this stuff you know it's kind of like if it hadn't had anything to do with a suicide then technically you can AMA you know, leave against medical advice, but, and I could have tried to still do that, but what they would have done was they would have gotten, um, uh, an order for me. So because I didn't, and I, you know, was voluntarily uh, going to go along, you know, because people have tried to say shit about that. And then they've tried to say about the other thing. You know, but when you have recurrent major depression and anxiety and. And I already know I'm going to get some shit from uh, probably because I know anonymous dude, you have PTSD, right? Well, I'm sure you probably may know what CPTSD is, which is what I, I don't actually you know, I thought I just had the same thing that you you did. Because I know you're sitting there watching me like a fucking little weirdo. You know. How many hours you've been streaming today, probably? Like, what, 11, 12? Like, and you call me a loser and shit? Get a fucking life. Dude, it's fucking delusional. I wouldn't even have looked at him or addressed him if I hadn't seen his shit right fucking there. I need to fucking turn off. Do not fucking recommend this shit. Did it. Oh, shit. On February 25th, 2022, Ohio. Concerned staff at a bar in Ohio promptly called the officers about a possible drunk driver in a car in the parking lot. 
When officers arrived at the scene, they found the driver asleep with his foot on the gas pedal while the car still running. Hey, sir! After several attempts by knocking on the window, officers managed to wake him up. Take your foot off the gas. Why you go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me, all right? How much have you had to drink tonight? I think three to 30 million dollars for reference. You need a Mac to respond? Mm -hmm. Did you realize when I, I approached you, I knocked on that window multiple times and you, you were not coherent? I'm tired, dude. You were passed out with your foot on the pedal and the gas, the accelerator. Do you, you, you realize what could have happened here? Right. Snuggly, are we today? Yes, sir. Yeah? Uh, earlier. Yeah. yeah, when was the last time? Earlier. Uh, it smells like an fire. The suspect admitted that he had been drinking and smoking marijuana earlier that night, and the reason for passing out in the car was this. No, it's my girlfriend. The girlfriend? She's in there. With further discussion with the suspect, he claimed that the vehicle belonged to his girlfriend. However, police arrested him for suspected operating a vehicle impaired OVI. Okay. I'm sorry, that was bad. That was that was, shouldn't have happened. But, but someone walked out and you hit him, man. You'd be going you're through right, a lot, you're lot right, more you're than what you're right. going through right now. You understand, and, sir? If you weren't in park, your car would have been going across the street in the trap. 100%. You're probably going to go to I can't make that promise. If you can find a ride, you won't go I to get a ride, I promise. I please call up mom. Hold on one second, sir. In there, dude. I'm so sorry. While the police were searching the car, the suspect's girlfriend, Kara, exited the bar and began shouting at the officers, using offensive language and escalating into aggressive behavior. Yeah, oh my god. What the f going on? That's my f car. Okay. Well, here, I'll. What the f are you doing? You need to calm down. No, you need to get the in my car. You want to be for what? Then talk. The right now. Okay. What the f for what? It, the it was... right now. I literally nothing wrong. No. Why the f Hey, somebody for this right now. You don't know, fuck it up for him. Let my let him go. Because your boyfriend passed out in the car. For what? For what? He passed out. For what? He was in the driver's seat. For what? For Byron. Are you shitting me right now? No. He's in, he's in the cruiser. He had a slit on the gas. Really what are you? What are you talking about? Why are you in my car? Because he was in the car, his operating car, and he's now under arrest. How? How? Where's the? Where's the security footage? Run it. They got it on camera. Was this woman? She must be drunk. Run the security footage. He was in the parking lot. Where's the security footage? Are you? Right now? No, all they got to say is we saw him doing it. We observed it. We heard it. You searched my, that's my car. Right. That's my car. Speed you speed didn't speed. have my permission. Are you want to take your marijuana? My yeah. marijuana? Yeah. There's, that's, there's you marijuana. arrested him. Yeah, there's marijuana in the car. That's my car. It doesn't matter. There's marijuana in the car. So you want to arrest me for a $150 charge? Go ahead. Slap me with the Is it yours or is it not? You want to sit here and interrogate me? Is it yours or is it not? Is it or is it? I'm asking you a question. You need to shut the fuck up. Because you wouldn't even in the altercation. You're about to get your ass to go to jail. Is it or is it not? Decriminalize and stay wild. That's my mother I should be told of my permission to search any goddamn car. I don't need your permission. It's go ahead. You support, no, you you're not going to search my mother car. You're going to raise your voice or you're going to be placed on For what? For what? You're That's my car. Right now. You're placed under arrest for um, 
disturbing the peace, maybe disorderly conduct. Depends. Question for what? That's my car. You do not have my, get a search warrant. That is my <laughs> car. That is my <laughs> car. You do not have my permission. Okay. Go. I suggest to go with your. Friend. You do not have my permission to search my car anymore. You're, You're not gonna gonna search my car. You're not going to search my car. When the suspect's friend tried to calm her down, the suspect also shouted at her, revealing the extent of her intoxication. You're not going to search my car. For what? For what? For what? You do not have my car to search. That's my car. And I'm being caught with you two right now. You do not. For what? What are you going to arrest me for? What are you going to arrest me for? Obstructing official business. Obstructing official business? For what? For the marijuana. Where? Show me that right now. Show me that. Show me the law. Pull it up on the web right now. Pull it up. Now I'll be, I'll be calm. I'll walk away. The marijuana is in the car. There's two bags of marijuana. For marijuana? Yes. And because he's drinking and driving, the car is going to be towed. There's an open container. Okay. Where is the law that you have the right to search my car? I just arrested? explained that. Okay, I just explained everything to you. No ifs, ands, or buts. I'm not going to keep arguing with you. And if you're going to continue to be like this, you're going to be placed under arrest for what? For obstructing. Well, I'm making my belongings out of my goddamn car. You can do that once we're done. All right. Go ahead. You can right. search all my shit. Okay. Put out right now. You need to do this. You're going to be placed under arrest. And right. you're going to stop. So you I'm want, telling you, you right now. There, I'm going to tell you right now. Let us do our job. I'm being calm. That's fine. But if you're not, and I'm going to be sitting right, right the. When you search my car because you're not pleased okay. to shit on my Good. goddamn boyfriend. Good. I'm gonna sit, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit right here. I'm gonna, no, gonna I'm, gonna, I'm gonna watch you search my car. You're not gonna sit right Why don't I have the right to search my car? Why don't I have the right to watch you search my car? You can just right. stand over there. Yeah, and I'm gonna watch you. I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna step back. And I'm gonna place on a video. That's all I'm asking. That's all right. Good. Whatever angle you're at, I'm walking behind you, and I'm up here. You're not walking. You're not walking behind me. I am walking. That, that's why I explained why you'd be placed under arrest for obstructing. I literally don't have none on me. Okay. I literally don't have none on me. It what? doesn't matter. Nothing, you're, for literally officer nothing safety, is on you're me. not walking behind Nothing is on okay. me right now. I want to walk right. behind you because you're not going to place shit on my goddamn boyfriend. She became more uncooperative and obstructive towards the police. Officers had no choice but to arrest her. Fella. Put your hands behind your back. For what? Obstruction official business. Go because I have money, baby. We're going to okay. sue the state of Claremont but, County. But tonight, you won't be I'm not the I literally did nothing. You have no... Put your hand behind your back. Put your hand behind your back, ma'am. Good. Good. We're not Yes, you are. Am I? I'm literally standing right here. Good. Mine's right here. Easy. Because I asked... Easy next. Because I asked the record the angle of my vehicle no, because they don't place drugs right now, okay? because he's a felon they don't place drugs on him because I thought you might roll that is the place you're not going to cruise right here get the stop stop right now oh so I need five oh, men get the I need one mother after arresting the woman she became even more aggressive so the police had to carry her to the police car by lifting her up Go ahead. I got, I got her. Go ahead. You don't have one too many Jose Cuervos. Oh, because we got a Right there. Yeah, cameras all over him. Yeah, I do. Yeah. If you kick again, you're gonna get hogged. I literally didn't. Are you? Are, get in the car. Where's your mark? Get in the car. Get in the car. Yeah, they're gonna hog tie your ass. In the car. Where's your mark? Get in the car. Get in the car. Put the seatbelt on. Thank you. Please, safety is very important. Hold on, y'all. Sorry, I ain't been looking at. Farting in jars. What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here. Ain't no worky verse strong. My man, fuck. Worky verse wrong, bro. Yeah, he was triggered, Dana. I'm sorry. I'm way behind in the comments. How you doing, spokesman? Oh, you. Oh, man. You leaving? Good night. Martin, I ain't talking about you, dude. 
I didn't talk about you. What the fuck are you talking about? Bro, hold on. Click the link, Martin. Come on up. Anonymous dude, you're welcome to click the link. Nunya, which would be Andrea, you're welcome to click the link. I could talk to you. Oh, my junkie, yeah, my junkie mom. That's all right. It doesn't bother me. I know my mom wasn't a junkie. So, like, you, you got to understand something, Martin. You ain't going to meet nobody that's more, well, okay, I guess I can't say that. Thank you, spokesman, for letting me know that. Mama Payday, you need to stop or you're going to get clocked. And when I mean by clock, I mean you're going to get uh, reported and or striped. So don't try to say I threatened you because clocked, I just gave you my meaning and definition for it used in this sentence. So you know, I'm going to also throw that in there because I know that'll be the next thing that, that try, everybody think. I mean, that's why I'm talking about Martin Light. Why do you think I brought up what my, my diagnoses are? And I talked about, I was going to show them. I went as far as showing. Um, and if you don't think clocked can mean that either, just one more thing. That's exactly what Triple T told me before he struck me for just using his content and fair, with fair use. But I don't know if you're using it in fair use because you probably aren't talking. If you're just sniping me, and not talking, which you probably are, that's not fair use. You should be, I mean, pausing and, you know, giving a reaction and all that. No, I, I don't watch uh, whoever that criminal is, you know. Yeah, I got a package in the mail. Um, I didn't touch it. And it went to the police, and, um, yeah, so, and they had put books for Moses' name and stuff on it, so, you know, that's going to be tracked, you know, so, whoever put that little, I mean, and it was some, somebody put the box together, because they put in a nice little stupid sticker on the sides of it. And everything else. And they wrote Books' name out and address on the return. So, I mean, Martin, are you or Anonymous going to come up? Like, I'm wanting to talk to you. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I guess I don't really care if Anonymous comes up. But I wanted to talk to you because I don't know. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure when I brought you up earlier, I said I've heard about some stuff. But I don't know all about it. Alright. So I don't know what you think I, I said negatively. I mean I've seen. Uh, going on my phone. Well, I think the last few days. I think I've seen once uh, a live that had your name on it. But that, that was it. I mean so. You want to come up? You can. Matter of fact, is since if you don't want to come up, which y'all don't, I mean, and that's the thing. Everybody always says, oh, I won't confront nobody. Well, I'm saying to come up. So let me see if I can. more hospitable I like having there's nothing there oh well
Oh, I didn't mean to click on that. That's Wade's. Uh, Balake, where is Balake at? My name is Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A A Ron. A A Ron is back, everyone. Uh, welcome back for a little bit more SPTV, where every day is one step closer to the total collapse of Scientology, folks. Uh, we're talking about Danny Masterson again. I wonder, are you guys getting sick of hearing about Danny Masterson? Because I got to be honest, I'm not getting sick of talking about him. Uh, Danny Masterson is, of course, uh, the actor from that '70s show. Uh, he is uh, now uh, convicted. Uh, convicted violent serial can i say this word 40 seconds into a video let's just do it guys convicted violent serial rapist and scientologist in good standing danny masterson we learned last week after yeah. uh fuck danny masterson <clears throat> that 30 to life show is what he's on now okay. he probably ain't never getting out Today we're gonna to be talking about Mr. And if Scientology don't uh, post, if they don't kick him out, then they just look bad, and his new which they already do. They're already ruined. It's inside the California prison system, one of the most dangerous, weird ass me states to do time in. And this prison seems to be pretty active. Active meaning, you know, a lot of violence. With a simple Google search, you'll see that MA on MA homicides are very frequent here. Those are the type of prisons you don't want to go to. But he doesn't have a choice, man. It doesn't matter if he's Danny Masterson and has millions or not. The millions are going to play a big factor in the way that he does time. And we're going to get Yeah, he's going to be running through that money. And he, he might survive for a little bit. But doing 30 to life, I'm sorry. He's going to burn through that shit. And once he runs out, it's going to be bad news. Into that. Well, first, he's already going to have a hard time just from the fact of why he's in there. Before I break that down, I do have a story to tell y'all. Written by an inmate that did time in the California prison system level four. Level three and up, the danger level rises significantly because there's nothing but violent offenders, gang members, lifers, rapists, you name it. The worst of the worst are from level three and up. And Mr. Masterson's in the same level of prison, so this should give you a little bit of an idea of what he might be having to deal with sooner or later down the road. So let's get right into it. If you enjoy all things locked up and crime related, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist for many more videos for you to start watching today. Now, Mr. Masterson was moved to North Kern State Prison. And for now, if I were to guess, Mr. Masterson is pretty safe. He's under lock and key. Probably gets out of his cell maybe two hours a day by himself, if not around one or two other people that need protection just as much as he does. People probably wonder, well, if he's in this special block, then he's going to be okay, man. Nothing's going to happen to him. Well, you would know if you followed the channel. I've done plenty of stories of people in these type of units getting got as well. Look, if a head honcho wants you dead in the California prison system, you're going to die. I mean, that's just how it is from what I gather. Ain't nothing going to stop it from happening. I'm going to break down how this happens here in a second. But first, let me read this story. And if Masterson happens to come out of this lockdown unit, protective unit, whatever you want to call, he's going to have to deal with these type of politics. Even if he doesn't come out, he might get a letter shot to him a little kite saying, bro, you're going to fall in line or else we're going to send someone your way just like this kite came your way. Right? That's how it happens. So let's go ahead and start reading a story from an inmate that will best describe uh, what Mr. Masterson will be looking forward to if he ever were to jump out of that PC unit. Also keep in mind that in California, the inmates separate by race. The article reads, I want to start out by saying I'm no longer part of any white power gangs or organizations, nor do I want to be. Those days have come and gone. I'm just here to tell you how it all works. Let's start at the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. I'm not there anymore, but I remember it like it was yesterday. How could I forget? I saw more stabbings than a person should ever have to. <laughs> I believe that, 100%. When you're white and you end up in the California prison system, you have to join one of the white power gangs. 
you don't have a choice if you want to survive. If anyone's seen that movie Shot Caller, I mean, that's exactly how it is, like, in real life. Like, dude was an accountant, whatever. His wife was a, you know, art person. He ends up going out. They have a few drinks. He's with his best friend. He wrecks. His best friend gets killed. He does prison time. You know, and when he comes out, he's in a gang. <laughs> like, he chose... I, I think the first night he was in there, he seen somebody like him when he came in that was green, kind of like he was, basically get violated. And so... He knew right then and then he he made his decision, you know, he approached one of the, you know, he basically, you know, so, and I, th I think one of the guys that told him, you know, out there, it is how it is, but in here, you know, you're either the predator or the prey, you know, he said, I can't remember all exactly what it is, but basically he decided he wasn't going to be a prey. And will protect you from trouble as long as you're white and don't have a bad jacket, meaning guys with sexual assault crimes, offenses on children, stuff like that. That's a bad jacket. That's kind of the field that Mr. Masterson's in. But keep in mind, he has millions. And one thing's for sure about that whole prison beast, it lives and breathes off of money. So that's going to play a big factor in Masterson's situation, if I were to guess. We'll get there in a second, but let me continue with the story. My first day on the yard. Yeah, so they're going to use him for his place, money. We passed one of the guys from my car. That's why I'm saying he's, he's going to have a little bit of time know, where it's going to be, the same race in the same you know, geographic location as you. He told me all the spots I couldn't walk or go into and showed me where the whites had their own spot where I was allowed to go. See, in these prisons, they have different TVs. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think of him being in there and trying to use a Scientology uh, technique on, on a, another prisoner or something or trying to share that. <laughs> it's bones and sections inside the pot oh. in the yard for different races. Let's say you're a white guy having to break that invisible barricade where the black guys are working. Something could definitely jump off just because you're walking on their territory. See, the prisons I've been in, man, ain't nothing separated like that. I was told we only play sports with whites and Mexicans, and the whites hold themselves to a higher standard to others inside prison. They feel that they are superior to all. White prisoners couldn't eat at the same tables or take showers in the same showers as black prisoners. Don't get me wrong, the black prisoners wanted it like that as well. So it worked out well for both groups. So within the first week of being in this prison, you have to hand over your paperwork detailing exactly what kind of charges you have uh -huh. to review. And if it all checks out, you don't have none of the dirty jacket charges that we just talked about. You'll become a brother in a tight knit organization. There's many different white power organizations inside California prison. You have your skinheads who are considered the extremists and the pecker woods or woods who are much less extreme. Some are just white men who need a place where they fit in for protection. In other words, not all pecker woods are racist. They're just trying to do their time without dying. But a lot are. Don't get it twisted, man. Racism in prison, I told y'all, even over here in Virginia, it elevates to a different level than you see on the streets. I was just a normal white guy, but being white, I had no choice but to be a pecker wood. One wrong move, I could be stabbed by my own guys. For example, whites in California prison system don't condone homosexuality or any out-of-race relationship. That kind of stuff will get you stabbed, at least on the yards for level three and four. So look, I had a guest come on to the channel and say that he almost got got by his own guys in California prison once they found out he had a black girlfriend. Picture that, man. That's unreal. But it is real. You know, not only is this guy telling in his story, but the guy told me in the video. I really didn't worry about all the violence. As crazy as that sounds, I truly didn't. I was just a young, dumb kid, a nobody inside the prison system. But I had an army to back me up. And that is something that is, if you were to ask me, a good thing to lean on in prison. Because a lot of prisons I've seen, these guys come in, they don't have nothing. Nobody to help them, man. They're getting their cheeks probably taken that night. So these prison systems, even though they're ran a bit different from east to west coast, they have their pros and cons. That's how it is in California. White prisoners protect white and black protect black, so on and so on. And if you happen to see one of your fellow white guys get into a fight with another race, it's mandatory for you to jump in and help, regardless if you know you're going to lose or not. 
If not, then later on, you will get stabbed up by your own people. And if I were to guess, they're going to be aiming for the lethal spots and make sure you don't see another day in the cell block. That's just how it goes. In order to keep structure, you have to keep strict punishment. And if you mess up and your life's on the line, then that's going to keep people in line. Just imagine how many people would stop stealing this country if the sentence was death or the sentence was they chop your hands and feed off. Ain't nobody going to be stealing shit or at least drop the crime rate down significantly. The fear factors that push the white power gangs inside the California prison system is no joke. Don't think for one minute you're a white man and you end up in the CDCR, you're just going to do your own thing. If you want to survive, you will get in line with the other whites and you will listen to them and go by all the rules they have. So you have a big difference between the hardcore prison system like the CDCR or some other place like the Wisconsin DOC. I'm guessing he did time there as well. Joining a white power organization is not a must in Wisconsin or many other states. You can be yourself. You don't have to worry about hanging out and eating with only whites. That's what I'm used to. Going, eating, trading, watching TV, using the phone, sharing the phone, doing anything and everything with any kind of race I want. So, you know, when I first heard all this stuff about the California prison system, I heard about it in the movies and stuff. I thought it was just movie stuff, but this is legit. They run their ship totally different, and it blew my mind. Another thing that I realized very quickly is not to talk too much about it. So, I mean, that's the reality of a higher-level prison in California. Now, will Mr. Masterson have to do with these type of politics? I think, yeah, sooner or later, he ain't going to be staying in that lockdown facility his whole bit. He's got too much time. He will get to a block that's a little more last. And and more see, active. that's what I'm saying. Thanks, Dana. Uh, I, I, I appreciate the uh, the message that you sent me on IG. Uh, no, but that's the thing I'm saying. Like, they have it so. I, 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 that's just what I'm saying. Uh, it, it's crazy. Like how it can be so different from uh, in one place, you know, and you could be just one state next to it, and it's completely the opposite. Um, I don't think they've done any of the 60 days in out west. I don't think so. At least not that far out. Well, then again, those are county jails, too. So, but sometimes they, they still do follow the, the tradition like the prisons do, or where they are. And if he hasn't been contacted already, that's probably when he will. A trustee will bring him a little letter, a little kite or something. From he somebody. got that long at man. You can tell that's him, man. I cannot believe that shit. Like, now I... Like, I won't. I used to love watching that show. He was never really a character I cared for on there, but uh, I didn't learn. He has a cousin, um, Alana Masterson. She was in The Walking Dead. She's also a Scientologist. Organization saying, Look, you're going to get down with the program or lay down. Which one? Right. And once that happens, you know, they can start milking this guy whichever way they want. If he does happen to start kicking money or anything along those lines, you're going to want to keep it going. Money is the most important thing in print. So it can make moves for you and keep you safe. If you were to ask me, that's the best thing going for him right now is the amount of money that he has. It could very well umbrella and protect him even from his sex crime. There's all kinds of different angles they could approach someone as popular and rich as Mr. Masterson. I could, I could sit here right now and come up with four different scenarios on how I would reach out to him. If I was a leader for this white group, I'd say, man, I got me a little honeysuckle to work on here, right? Because fear makes just about anybody do anything. And with the proper amount of fear put on the Mr. Masterson, man, regardless of where he's at, he's going to kick. So to say the least, it's going to be interesting to see how this guy survives prison. But I think he has a great chance, even though he has bad paperwork. It's just like what I've seen when it comes down to extortion. We're going to be talking about prison extortion next video. But guys will come in with bad paperwork. They'll extort them. If they didn't have money, then they would go straight to violence. Right? People with a lot of money, they don't want them out the block. They want to get everything they got. Anyways, hopefully you got a little something from this and understand that. That still don't mean that he might not have to be uh, suffering any 
harsher initiation ritual or anything like they probably going to beat the shit out of him one good time. <laughs> like they're not just going to, it just, it all depends. I, I don't know. It depends on who the leader is and you know what, the, they definitely ain't going to kill him. And not right away. Masterson's at is a very serious prison. Anybody that's been locked up over there and has their two cents they'd like to share and lace up the comments. But stay tuned. Tomorrow we're going to be jumping into a Georgia prison where the extortion is going out of control. Parents from all over are terrified for their children. Getting calls in the middle of the night saying they're going to get their cheeks taken and killed if they don't kick that two, three hundred bucks. Like you hear all the time, man, money's the root of all evil, especially in prison. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, especially the ones in California, look, y'all be easy. Your attorneys may appear in court. He had Robert. Michael Jackson's attorney, Tom Mesereau. We have the present. Yes, sir. We go over the top three moments from week one of actor Danny Masterson's rape trial. Journalist Tony Ortega comes back on to explain it all. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Webner. Week one of actor Danny Masterson's rape trial out in Los Angeles has finished up. The That 70s Show star is facing charges of forcibly raping three women. This allegedly happened between 2001 and 2003 when these women and Masterson were all members of the Church of Scientology. And he faces a lengthy prison sentence if convicted, up to 45 years, perhaps life in prison. And there is a lot that has happened in week one from opening statements to witness testimony. So to break down those top three moments from week one, I'm joined right now by someone who is inside that courtroom, journalist Tony Ortega. And Tony has been following this case. He's been a frequent contributor here on the Sidebar podcast on the Danny Masterson story. Uh, he is the founder of the Underground Bunker, where he writes about Scientology issues. You can find him at TonyOrtega.substack.com. And he is currently outside that courtroom right now. As we always like to see Tony, he's right on the scene. Tony, good to see you once again. Yeah, Thanks for having Tony's me a good dude. I uh, I've, I've, he writes stuff for people when you come out like I did. Jesse, yeah, I'm dealing with some sunlight and shadows. I'm doing the best I can here. You, uh, you've you been doing more than the best. I, I, I'll tell you, I know I put you in a tough position to go through the top three moments, but I think I think we have to start with the testimony of Jane Doe 1, right? I, I think that could have been one of the top moments if you can or elaborate on why that might have been. Well, absolutely. I mean, she was describing just a harrowing uh experience just really brutal forcible rape and and the details of course are just awful and she broke down numerous times there were times when the judge had to literally like stop everything take a recess uh, it was very upsetting for her and I, I thought that you know she she came across as credible and 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 it was it was tough for her to, to say certain things but she you know she has these vivid memories uh while at the time she's describing having felt in suspiciously intoxicated after this one drink at his house and she's fighting to stay conscious and, she, and some things are fuzzy but let me tell you she spelled out a really really awful scene for this jury and we want to take a moment right now and thank our good friends at the commercial break comedy podcast have you ever asked yourself these very important questions like why would someone want to date a ghost what's it like to be married to a cat should i learn to speak um, and correct me if I'm wrong, not only sexually assaulted her, she tried to fight him back to no avail. And then afterwards, she tried to report it to Scientology and was completely pressured to remain silent. Correct? Right. That, that he raped her, that she fought back in numerous ways. At one point, she says he pulled a gun out of a drawer next to the bed. Um, and then, yeah, she made her way and then immediately reported it to the Church of Scientology. She was, I mean, that's the other thing we're learning is just how much Scientology was in control of these lives and how Scientology tried to convince her not to go to the police. At one point, they finally allowed her permission to sue him, but still don't go to the police. And she really had to defy them. And then the other testimony that was amazing last week is she, she described being pressured by the church to sign an agreement and accept $400,000 from Danny so that she would never talk about this event ever again. It was it was just really something. When she's testifying, and I kind of saw this in the Harvey Weinstein trial when I was in that courtroom watching these victims testify against Weinstein, I was watching the jury intently. What was the jury doing to the best that you could see while she was testifying? When, when uh, Deputy DA Mueller was leading her through that testimony, the, the jury looked 
really rapt. I mean, they were paying attention to every word. And I don't want to read too much into this, Jesse, but during cross-examination, uh, Philip Cohen is doing his best. He's got a different style. But I noticed the jurors weren't looking at him. And, I, you know, I, I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. They might have just been sort of thinking about it. But um, very different style than, than uh, D.A. Mueller. Let's go into that. So the top two moment, uh, I think, would have to be the defense's cross-examination of Jane Doe one, right? I mean, what stood out to you there? Well, it was interesting to me because, uh, you know, in the run-up to this case, of course, the thing that's... For the victims of Danny Masterson, today was a day of reckoning. The former actor and now convicted felon brought to justice. Masterson's two victims, who have not been publicly identified, termed Jane Doe 1 and 2, saw their attacker in court sentenced to 30 years to life. I feel um, really happy that the victims feel that justice has been served. After two mistrials ultimately led to a conviction in May, the former actor appearing in an L.A. courthouse today. Jane Doe 1 today saying through tears, I wish I'd reported him sooner to the police. Jane Doe 2 telling Masterson, you relish in hurting women. It is your addiction. It is without question your favorite thing to do. The reaction from the victims in the courtroom was kind of a mixture of relief, but also sadness and a lot of just mixed emotions about what had happened. This had been a long road and the victim I would have never them. thought that Dan, that the guy that plays Hyde would end up being this dude about how what this has done to their lives and how this has disrupted them and, and stolen their joy were were very emotional so it it, it was some relief to see what was that's why i didn't want to tell you you'd get all after school special on me <laughs> masterson once starred as the wisecracking best friend on that 70s show alongside co-stars tover grace mila kunas and ashton kutcher the show propelled him to stardom it's okay. <laughs> You're home now. <laughs> Get off me, man. You let me love you, orphan boy. The accusations against Masterson came to light in 2017, more than a decade after the alleged 2003 assaults. By then, the actor was starring in a hit Netflix show, The Ranch, alongside Ashton Kutcher. Hey, what's up? I never watched that show. Who the hell's that? That's Heather. You used to date her. As LAPD took up the investigation, Masterson was dropped from that show. In 2020, he was arrested and charged. Masterson was one of the most visible celebrity Scientologists, a controversial religious group known for its high-profile Hollywood adherence. That's the building I stay Celebrities in. have great importance in Scientology because L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, originally stated that celebrities are important, that celebrities set the trends in society celebrities give you credibility abc news spoke to mike rinder last fall he's a former scientology official who has become one of the church's most vocal critics and the author of a recent memoir about his time in the church a billion years in response to our interview the church called rinder a liar during the first trial last year all three women said they were initially hesitant to speak to law enforcement about the alleged assaults because they claim church teachings tell them not to. There is a, a sense within Scientology that it is not only better to keep things internal and handled within the organization, it is tantamount to uh, assigning someone to hell to turn them over to law enforcement and the court system. During the most recent trial that began in April, prosecutors told the jury the evidence will show that they were drugged. Also adding intimate details about the alleged rapes, saying Masterson dragged one accuser across the floor by her hair and sodomized another one. The defense countering in their opening statement that the alleged victim's stories are inconsistent and suggested the women colluded over time, adding that the case is people versus Masterson, not people versus Scientology. The women accusing Masterson eventually left the church. In a statement provided to ABC News, the Church of Scientology said the church was not a party to this case. The church has no policy prohibiting or discouraging members from reporting criminal conduct of anyone, Scientologists or not, to law enforcement. All allegations to the contrary are totally false. 
there is not a scintilla of evidence supporting the scandalous allegations that the church harassed the accusers. You know, I think this case has so many personal ties. And that's complete bullshit. Eyes for people. I They're just really good at hiding stuff. Like, that that's how they got their tax exempt status. They literally uh, pulled off like an espionage type of uh, act whenever they sent Scientologists to work for the IRS, work as a janitor in the building, different things. And through that, they were able to um, get ways and learn things about, like, you know, people high up in the IRS or this in the building, like, you know, a superintendent, something or another. And they got a lot of blackmail. And then they started basically suing the shit out of the organization had celebrities suing it, Scientologists suing it, and they basically went to him and said, this can all go away if we can just get declared, you know, tax, and it was done. I definitely think it's a positive sign for victims and women who, who want to come forward that if this is a conviction that they're looking for, uh, they might be able to get it. I'm glad they did. I Uh, the story of an Leah actor on Remini ATV. is a big, I'm glad she came out. Show A member of the Church of Scientology and three former church members who say he raped them. Danny Masterson, best known for his role as Stephen Hyde on that 70s show, which aired on Fox for eight seasons, ending in 2006. Now 47, Masterson was convicted in May of raping two women at his home in separate incidents between 2001 and 2003. The jury deadlocked on a rape charge involving the third woman. On Thursday, yesterday, Masterson, who continues to deny the allegations, was sentenced to prison, 30 years to life. Masterson's attorneys say he will appeal the convictions. But there is more to this story, questions about the role of the Church of Scientology and whether it played any role in why justice was so long in coming in this case. Scientology, a relatively new religion, is secretive and litigious and has regularly found its legitimacy challenged, including opposition from the medical community to its claims about mental health and e-meters, devices that supposedly monitor the body's electric flow, while so-called auditors ask would-be members questions to discover sources of trauma. The Scientology connection is important here because, as Rolling Stone reported, witnesses testified at the trial that Scientology has an expressly written doctrine that not only discourages, but prohibits its members from reporting one another to law enforcement. Yeah. Now, during their testimony and at the sentencing, as well as in separate civil lawsuits, Masterson's accusers said that church officials tried to silence them and cover up for Danny Masterson. During the trial, Variety reported that the women claimed, quote, the church dissuaded them from reporting Masterson to the police. Prosecutors argued throughout the trial that Masterson had taken advantage of his position in the church to rape women without fear of repercussion, and that the church forbid women from going to the police to report sexual assault, unquote. The Los Angeles Times says during closing arguments, prosecutor Ariel Anson told the jury, quote, the church tells his victims rape isn't rape. You cause this, and above all, you can't go to law enforcement, unquote. Hours after Masters and sentencing, the Church of Scientology responded by re-releasing its statement from the day of his conviction in May. It says, in part, there's not a scintilla of evidence supporting the scandalous allegations that the church harassed the accusers. The church has no policy prohibiting or discouraging members from reporting criminal conduct of anyone, unquote. Among those in the courtroom yesterday to support the women, actress and advocate Leah Rimini, a former member of the Church of Scientology, who's been an outspoken critic. She joins us now with Mike Render, a former Church of Scientology senior executive and Remini's co-host of the podcast, Fair Game. Thanks to both of you for being here. Leah, let me start with you. Variety reports that one of the accusers, identified as Jane Doe number one, testified, quote, my understanding from Scientology my entire life was that you can never be a victim. Nothing ever happens to you that you didn't cause. No matter what condition you find yourself in life, no matter how horrible you are responsible, you. And then you learn that. later on in the OT levels. Oh, the reason why 
even though you've spent all this money or, or time, depending on which way you go to get your doctrine, now the the reason why you still have bad things happening and you still get sick and stuff like that is because you have body thetans, which are these fucking alien spirits that basically were killed long, long time ago and they were released on Earth and they attach to you. So then you're put on the E meter and you're uh, soloing. Hold on, let me see. Um, what was it called? Um, Oh, what was that name of that? Uh, oh, yeah, here it is. I finally get to OT3. And they give me the secret materials, which you've been hearing about all this time. They're handwritten by Hubbard. You have to keep them in a locked briefcase. Be very cautious, because they've always said, if this gets You have up, to keep them in a locked briefcase when you... And you go through two fucking security doors to get to the fucking briefcase with the files in. And basically, when you go the first time, they open up a briefcase, they go and get the files out of a safe room, they put the files in the briefcase, they have you program your fucking code to the briefcase, they close it, they have you then close it, lock it, take a handcuff and cuff it to you, because if you go to the bathroom, you take your briefcase with you, if you go here, you take your brief. I mean, that's how fucking, yeah, it's like a whole hocus pocus ritual thing with it. It's dangerous to people. It can actually do them harm if they are not. Yeah, and if people hear about this and they haven't went through the previous training you went through, this can fucking give them pneumonia and they can fucking die. So keep in mind, though, this was written... He died in the 80s. This was out in the 80s. So this is probably written in the late 60s, 70s. So keep in mind... Adequately prepared. And I read it. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't make any sense. This gobbled story that didn't make sense. I think, remember, for one fleeting second, thinking, well, maybe it's an insanity test. <laughs> maybe if you believe this, they kick you out. <laughs> maybe that's it. That, of course, is not the case. They talk about, you know, the fact that the Earth was created at such and such trillions of years ago, and this, this guy... Space guy. Galactic overlord. This was the prison planet and people being caught and captured and being brought to planet Earth. And put them in volcanoes and then blow them up with A-bombs. Whoa. I studied geography in school. Those volcanoes didn't exist 75 million years ago. And we have these lost souls all over us and we have to get rid of them. And I'm going, what <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm down for the self-help stuff. I'm down for, okay, I can be clear. I can, you know, I can get rid of those, the negative emotions. But what the fuck is this? When you get to the upper levels of Scientology, the creation myth is explained to you. The story is that 75 million years ago, people lived in a world very much like the world of America in the 1950s. People at that particular time and space were walking around in clothes which looked very remarkably like the clothes they wear at this very minute. And the cars they drove looked exactly the same. And they walked down streets that looked like these streets. It was a very similar world and similar problems, one of which was overpopulation. They had elected a fellow by the name of Zimu to the supreme ruler. There was a tyrannical overlord of the galactic confederacy named Zenu. In order to resolve this problem of overpopulation, he called people in ostensibly for tax audits and had them frozen with injections of glycol to their heart. Boxed them up in boxes, threw them into space planes. PC-8 airplane is the exact copy of the space plane of that day. They were flown to the prison planet, Tijiak, it's actually the planet Earth. 
and these frozen bodies were then dropped into volcanoes. And then they set off hydrogen bombs on the top of each volcano. And their disembodied spirits, these are called Thetans, floated out and they were captured and forced to sit in front of movie screens. With a 3D super colossal motion picture. They were shown images, implants, as Hubbard would have it. Every man is shown crucified. So was the psychiatrist shown crucified. That's how he gets away with what he gets away with. The electric shocks people. And when a child is born, a thetan will leap inside the child's body at that very instant and it becomes like the child's soul. More than one thetan might crowd into the body. Hundreds or thousands might. They're the source of all of our neuroses and fears and anxieties. Then you are on the e-meter by yourself now. You're soloing. You're supposed to scan mentally from your top of your head to your toes to see if you can locate any alien beings. And when you do, you tell them to go away. I kept on trying to audit. I could not figure out how I could have all these spirits of dead people attached to me, inside me, on me. I was clear. For God's sake, I was clear. People actually have breakdowns, you know, nervous breakdowns, because they spend so much time thinking about being infested by these creatures, if you're really believing that, it can drive you crazy. Those years of introspection eventually led me to sincerely considering that I was so bad that I couldn't confront how bad I was. I didn't know it at the time, but a depression set in that was with me for years. And the worst thing was that LRH kept ordering me to more auditing. I had to find swords that were stuck in me, hypothetical swords, imaginary swords that were causing all this pain. This auditing went on and on wasn't doing any good, I should have been left alone. But everything that I took offense with, I rationalized almost immediately. I had to. I could not continue in this game of Scientology without explaining away what he was doing. It got to be a way of believing. And every one of us got into that. It was part of the mind control. It was part of the cultic manipulation. He was the master who did it to us and we took it on and then we did it to ourselves. And I learned from it that I would never ever again, you know, go do the bidding of a tyrant. You know, most religions are tax exempt and many have beliefs and practices that in the modern context would be considered strange. Is Scientology any different? I mean, if you go to a Christian or a Jew or Muslim and ask them, what do you believe? They can basically describe the uh, most important parts of their religion in a minute or two. Well, what does a Scientologist believe? You, you need to be in Scientology for seven or eight years and in for a couple hundred thousand dollars before you finally learn this backstory of Xenu the Galactic Overlord. Now, if you were told that on day one, how many people would join? <laughs> exactly. It says we are live. Um, thank you guys for continuing to be my uh, tech technological guinea pigs. I'm going back and forth testing different platforms here. And I figured this would be a fantastic opportunity to answer a question that comes up a lot. Uh, whenever I talk about the fact that one of Miscavige's big dirty secrets and one of uh, L. Ron Hubbard's big dirty secrets <laughs> was that there is no such thing as OT9 and 10. This is, this is a particular insidious and vicious type of lie and deception that in my mind differentiates the cult of Scientology from other, um, well, from, from religions that are actually faiths and 
uh, you know, they might believe some crazy stuff, but it is belief. This fact of OT9 and 10 and, not, and there not being any OT9 and 10 is a very specific point of deception that is perpetrated and perpetuated uh, on the entire uh, Scientology body by David Miscavige and a handful of Scientology senior executives. Um, if we were to compare, you know, uh, just to the Roman Catholic Church or Christianity, right? A, a Christian would say, look, we may not know that there's a God or a heaven, but we take it on faith. And uh, they admit that it's faith. And they also won't find out whether they're right or wrong until after they die. <laughs> and there's a particular amount of honesty to that. They admit that they don't really know and that it's just faith. David Miscavige and L. Ron Hubbard Ron, prior to him uh, tell Scientologists this bridge to total freedom is real. The state of full operating Thetan is real. And, and Miscavige in particular says... And that, there's something interesting right there. Let me share with you guys what a operating Thetan is. That's why the levels are called OT. All right. So basically when you start out at the bridge on the bridge to total freedom, as they call it, you're when you're at the very bottom, like you're in the no and you start thinking of the bridge, you know, thinking about this type of stuff, you're in the aware. So you're you're like at the starting line. All right. And so what what you, what you do is you've got to go through basic like introductory courses about you know certain words and terms like basically learning the study of because um, they'll tell you that Scientology stands for when you break the word down study of knowing you know anything with the word ology means study of so. That's literally what the word was created and, and comes to when you break it down. And they tell you that, and you would go through communication courses blowing up, and you would go through these different levels of auditing where you audit with another person, and they basically, uh, you know, you go through traumatic uh, memories and all types of different things that have to deal with your life, like actually a lot of personal and you know really personal stuff and you know they're bound to not you know be kind of like a therapist they can't reveal it but they still keep those notes on you and don't make no mistake the executives any somebody can look at them and you're supposed to be completely honest in them uh, otherwise you know you're not getting your auditing done completely and so when you get up to a certain point, you reach a state that's called clear, which means you're supposed to be free of all that uh, negative traumatic past stuff that you've had holding you back. Then you start at OT, OT1, and OT is an operating Thetan. Now, a fully done and made operating Thetan or operating spirit is somebody that's got... Uh, perfect recall of everything they're completely aware of their their past they know where they are present and they got an idea of where they're going to go in the future so they're at will over their life you know um they don't ever get sick um you know i mean it's basically somebody that's perfect you know it's almost kind of like superhuman the way they describe it too. Before L. Ron Hubbard died, he finished writing up all of his research into the upper uh, secret OT levels. He finished it. It's done. It's in the vaults. We've been waiting for you schmucks to expand these organizations. And, um, you know, L. Ron Hubbard said we can't release OT9 and 10 until there's a certain number of Scientologists in the world, until the Scientology organizations are reach a certain size. Miscavige has now changed that into until every organization in the world has a massive new renovated building. But the point I'm making here is that Miscavige's big secret, the big lie, is that there is no OT9 and 10. L. Ron Hubbard didn't leave behind anything. In all of his scraps, in all of his notes, in all of his files and his folders and everything, Miscavige and company tore through every scrap of paper. There's nothing. 
There's nothing. And so whenever I talk about this in the videos, people go, well, why can't Miscavige just invent something? Just Who cares if L. Ron Hubbard didn't uh, do it? No one knows. No one will know. No one will know. How will they know? So let's just discuss why David Miscavige cannot just create something and call it OT9 and 10, or at least what are the biggest barriers? And um, part of the barriers have to do with how uh, Scientologists have had OT9 and 10 described for them. And let me put it this way. L. Ron Hubbard said... I'm sorry, hold on. I'm trying to look at my chat. Cosmic. Yeah, we're 420 friendly. The topic is uh, Scientology. For now, I'm going to be doing more stuff here soon. That OT8... Remember, guys, there's eight OT levels on the bridge right now. Uh, eight OT levels that a Scientologist with enough time and enough money can get enough auditing up to OT8. That's as high as it goes. But if you look at Scientology's Bridge to Total Freedom, it goes... Or if you join the Sea Org, and maybe if you join really young and work your ass off, you might get to OT8 by the time you're in your 50s, 60s, if you're really good. It goes up to OT15. All right. L. Ron Hubbard said that OT8 is the first actual OT level. And then OT one, you know, younger. It just depends. I mean, there's a lot of people that are really young that have gone all the way up. I mean, because they got a lot of shitload of money too. Through seven should be called and known as pre OT levels. Now they're also colloquially just called OT levels. But L. Ron Hubbard said OT eight's the first OT level. But why did he say this? Because he said OT1 through 7 addressed the problems of a spiritual being in terms of negative gain. Hubbard described negative gain as improving the condition of something by removing things from it. You are making it, the spiritual being, more pure by removing things from it that are basically making it impure. Now, thanks to South Park and a lot of other sources at this point, we now know he's talking about getting rid of body thetans, right? Negative gain. On Scientology's OT levels, you are, you are improving your spiritual health and awareness and ability by getting rid of your goddamn body thetans, those crazy, unconscious, sick, demented alien souls that are stuck to your body. Uh, and they got that way because of the incident with Xenu 75 million years ago. This is what Scientologists they, believe, folks. They, don't there's believe. incident one and there's incident two. Huh. Blame me. I'm just the messenger. Okay. So Hubbard said OT1 through 7 is negative gain. Well, to a Scientologist who knows what's on the OT levels, what that means that what they're expecting is that the OT levels above 8 cannot continue to involve getting rid of body thetans. I think that's the crux. That's Miscavige's first big hurdle. It can't be more of the same. They've already tricked all the damn Scientologists with the more of the same trick from OT1 through 7. As a Scientologist, your average Scientologist just walking down the street who hasn't done the OT levels, they have no idea what a body thetan is. They have no idea that L. Ron Hubbard uh, hits you on the OT levels with this information about body thetans and that that's what's wrong with you. And you first learn that on OT3. And when you do it on OT3, you're like, well, this isn't what I thought. This isn't what I expected. But let's just get this done and we'll see what's on OT4. And then you get to OT4. More body thetans, except now it's body thetans who are high on drugs. You're like, oh, okay, well, this is not what I expected. I sure hope OT5 is not more body thetans. Okay, fine. I guess I'll audit all these drugged out body things. Okay, you finish OT4, you get to OT5, and L. Ron Hubbard tells you, more body things. Except this time, you're dealing with clusters of body things. And these body things have all grouped together like little popcorn balls. And you got to wake them up and break them up before you can get rid of them. And you're like, um, oh, if someone's commenting. By the way, one of the reasons I'm doing this test is because of the audio. So um, anyway, I'm just going to keep going. Um, <laughs> So on OT5, you got to break up the Thetan clusters, and then you can get rid of the body Thetans. And then OT6 is just a training course to learn how to audit OT7. And then on OT7, now you are auditing body Thetans in the environment. 
And actually, um, anyone in the chat or who watches this replay, tell me a little bit more about that. Like, I'm going to give a very simplistic explanation that OT7, you've already gotten rid of your own body thetans, then you got rid of the drug ones, then the thetan clusters, and then on OT7, you're auditing them in the environment. But please answer me this. Are you still potentially finding body thetans on yourself on OT7? Um, are you allowed to audit any body things attached to other people on OT7 or is it just in the environment? Because as of right now, that's kind of my conception of it. That's how I understand it. And um, if I need to uh, tweak my understanding, let me know in the comments, guys. Now on OT8, like I just said, it's the first real OT level. You don't do any more of, the of finding and getting rid of body things. Instead, on OT8, what you do is... Uh, the case supervisor, the auditor, uh, the case supervisor is someone who um, supervises the auditing. They go through your auditing folders and they, they, they basically come up with, they make a list of, and I might be oversimplifying this, guys, but this is the gist, of all of the past life memories and past life incidents. So past life moments of pain and unconsciousness that you have recalled and discussed in all of your auditing sessions up until that point. They essentially make a list of them. And OT8 is, is really just you going back through these things and determining now, like looking back on it retrospectively, were these memories yours or did they belong to one of your body thetans? <laughs> Can you imagine that being an OT level? Can you imagine paying for that kind of mental masturbation and then having to pretend like that was some amazing, spiritually empowering process. You've already got all of these, <laughs> all of these like, I'll say fraudulent memories, all these imagine, all these imaginations that you've come up with about your past lives. Now you're, now you're going paying, paying good money uh, to go through these with an auditor and be like, that wasn't even my, that wasn't even my memory. That was a memory of my body thing. Okay. Now, one of the ways that OT8 has been described, because because Scientology has to describe this stuff to the people who aren't OT in a way that will make them interested in it, but without divulging what it is, because that would violate the confidentiality. One of the ways OT8 is described to people is uh, that the end phenomena, what you're supposed to accomplish by the end of it is that after OT8, you have found out who you are not. And now you are ready to find out who you really are. So that's just a euphemism for, hey, all those memories that you had in your auditing sessions and you've sort of adopted, you know, those memories as, you know, part of your personality. It's part of who you think you are as a spiritual being. Yeah, those weren't even you, bro. Those are your body things. One of your tens of thousands of body things. And it's like, surprise, that's what you got to enunciate. Okay, so now, now I know that those memories weren't mine. Now, now, now I'm ready to find out who, who I really am. I've paid for a lot of auditing now. I've been telepathically communicating with a lot of sick spirits for the last 10 years. <laughs> uh, and now I know that not only were those spirits responsible for my mental and spiritual, my, my physical, mental and spiritual problems, but now those spirits were responsible for all my memories. So now I don't even know who the hell I am. Thanks for nothing. Uh, I'm ready for OT9 and 10. And then you find out there is no OT9 and 10. Except you don't find out there is, isn't any OT9 and 10 unless you're watching my channel. So this is the cliffhanger that Scientologists have been given. And then add on top of all that the fact that OT8 came out in like 1988. Now I'm not good at math, you guys, because I grew up in a cult. Okay, but that's over 30 years ago. <laughs> How many? Okay, so 22. Yeah, it's 30 years ago. Okay, it's 30 years ago. So, so imagine you've done all this Thetan telepathy. You finished OT8. You found out your memories aren't even your own, and now you've been waiting 30 god damn years to find out what comes next can you even imagine what would happen if david miscavige came out with some more body thing bullshit everybody would leave scientology everybody who'd already finished ot7 or 8 and whatever and was ready for ot9 would be like more body thing shit i'm out of here and so it's not that miscavige couldn't possibly come up with something it's that he couldn't possibly come up with something that would live up to the hype 
and the expectation. So at this point, Miscavige is at a point where the, the, the mystery and the expectation of what OT 9 and 10 could be is more valuable to him and um, is more effective at keeping people in Scientology than anything his elf in this could ever come up with. And this would really be kind of an interesting exercise of uh, exercise. Like, let me know in the comments below. Give me your best ideas, w whether you're a former Scientologist or not. Give me your best ideas as to what Miscavige could come up with and call it OT9 and 10 that wouldn't just cause everyone in Scientology to instantly uh, he head for the doors, you guys. I had this conversation with Mike Rinder one time, and he said, you know, uh, he said, he said, please don't forget, there's really no limit to how much bullshit Scientologists will believe if if you tell them it came from L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> and, and that is something that will definitely work in Miscavige's favor. But but in that conversation, see, Miscavige used to uh, be a messenger for L. Ron Hubbard, and he spent a lot of time close to him when he filmed uh, different videos for the church, different things. So Miscavige had access to Hubbard. That's how he was able to take control when Hubbard died. Station Mike said, you know, he literally could just release OT9 and 10 and make it auditing other people's body thetans, that this is actually the key to clearing Earth, that you don't have to get everyone into Scientology. If you have enough people on OT9 and 10 auditing other people's body thetans, it would be just as good, Scientologically speaking, just as good as getting those people themselves into Scientology. In fact, even better, because it takes like a decade or more to get someone from walking in the door of Scientology to, to getting onto OT7. And that's, you know, that's, that's being optimistic as far as the decade or more. Um, it takes a decade or more to get somebody up to the level where they're auditing body thetans on OT7. And if you can just get people onto OT9 and 10 and have them audit the body thetans of the world, then... Um, then it would actually even shortcut that process. I love how he's Bypass talking. Bypass the like entire process it. of how long it takes to get somebody. Of course, up to the we top don't of the believe this anymore. And you know, superficially speaking, I, that sounds like I a never great idea. Knew about this until I learned about it after. I mean, I mean, they don't like he said they don't tell anybody about it because you could get pneumonia. Supposedly, that's a uh, lot of people uh, tell them. Unless you consider the fact that you can't release more body thing and shit and explain why that took 30 fucking years. You, how do you pull that one off? I don't know. That would be a bridge too far for me. <laughs> um, how do you say that's what took 30 years? And that's 30 years if we released it today. Who the fuck is at my door? All right, what the fuck you want, dude? Who is this? Hey, man. I hope 2024. Keep your head up and keep looking forward. Yeah. Adios, ludicrous. Adios, Weblo. Hey, he ain't ready to release anything today. Um, how do you explain why that is why every org in the world needed a new $10 million building before OT9 and 10 could be released if it's just more of the same of what everyone's been doing uh, for the last 35, 40 years? Like OT8 came out 30 years ago, but OT7 came out uh, many years before that. So... Um, I'm trying to think, do I have any other thoughts on what his barriers would be? Oh, yeah. Just that up until the point that L. Ron Hubbard died, he never ev even delved into any other aspects of quote unquote OT research that had anything to do with anything other than body thetans. So there's not even like any cute little hints or tips or, you know, vague impressions of something that LRH left behind that would be like um, a, an interesting field uh, of research or, or advancement that, that, I mean, not that Hubbard really did any research. I mean, Hubbard's research. Was what up, Square? Oh, it's, really just... it's Cat Daddy. 
just you know just want to wish you a happy new year uh, uh, yeah you could try that some other time ain't no okay cat daddy sitting in a room by himself thinking of things scientologists have never really comes to term have never really come to terms with this fact like and and i say that from, from experience like it didn't even really occur to me until i left scientology that you're like wait what was there any research hubbard talks an awful lot about research but where, where's all the research i don't know i just always kind of took his word for it <laughs> um so that's that guys this is i mean this is really it's remarkable to think that miscavige's hold uh, and control over this organization really does hinge on this fact of people believing in the bridge to total freedom people believing in the state of operating Thetan, and people believing that hubbard himself did travel this route document this route research this route um write it up for everyone else and that it just literally doesn't exist and again i might be being a little repetitive here this is what differentiates the scam that is scientology from part in the analogy what some like particularly militant atheists would call the scam of other mainstream organized religions in this case i'm picking on christianity when the pope tells you there's a heaven he doesn't tell you that the proof is locked away in the vault but if you just give enough money he'll release it one of these days christians will at least acknowledge it's all faith miscavige tells scientologists the shit's in the vault <laughs> there's nothing in the vault <laughs> but old lrh lectures so all right guys uh, if i stay on here i'll keep repeating myself over and over again but this really was an excuse to uh answer this one question test out the audio on um this new thing that i'm using and uh so yeah i would like to leave it please give me your best your best shots your best guesses what could miscavige put together that he could call ot9 and 10 that scientologists might believe let me know in the comments down below all right everybody thanks for watching i will be back soon aaron got out he grew up in the church of scientology is once again proving why it's such a contentious I need to have that for later and look at it. Guys, how's Chris safety? Safety feels safe or I can't say nothing, guys. This this windows are like bulletproof. Well, I'm not sure about bulletproof, but is that a little off? Ese de azul es Sebastián. No compre nada. Es... Like, oh, they didn't let us out. They, they look bad. Es una secta. Twilla's friend or something. So I think what's going on not the war the more i look the worse it got so i'm like what the hell it's kind of in trouble i don't know Why are we doing this? Weather's breaking. We could leave. I, I thought we was lying low. Yeah, come on. What do you want from me, Jose? I just don't want any more folks to die, Dutch. We're living, Jose. We're living. Look at me. We're living. Even you. But we need money. Everything we have is in Blackwater. You fancy heading back there? No. Listen, Dutch, I ain't trying to undermine you. I just... I just want to stick to the plan, which was to lie low, then head back out west. Now... 
Suddenly, we're about to rob a train. What choice have we got? Leviticus Cornwall's no joke, Dutchie. Who is Leviticus Cornwall? He's a big railway magnet, sugar dealer, oil man. Well, how good for him. Sounds like he has more than enough to share. Dutch! Gentlemen, it is time to make something of ourselves. Get your horses ready. We have a train to rob. Why are we doing this? Why this he was right. Hosea was right. Happy New Year, man. Again, I don't know. I, I'm not going to let anyone else up unless I know you. You know, I'm not playing these games. I'm doing this for me. To get out of the fucking habit, which I've actually been out of. I guess I'm just kind of doing it because I'm bored. You know. I'm not going to talk to people I don't want to talk to. Was you followed? No. Was you followed? I said no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is your problem? What is your problem, partner? You don't, uh, you don't look so good. What is wrong with you? Nothing wrong with me. I'm fit as a fiddle. And I inside you, ain't. I'm just a realist, friend. Michael reckons there's a rat. Oh, does he? On what evidence? He's only back a man. Mike is the rat. Pinkerton show up. <laughs> We've been on the run since you two fools went crazy in Blackwater. We barely escaped with our lives in Saint Denis. Now we got a rat. Well, Molly clearly talked, but who else? Maybe we pushed things too hard. Uh, Maybe time for folks like us has passed. <laughs> we don't need a rat. We got sloppier than the town drunk, and they know who we are, and where we are, and what we're doing. The way I see it, the best thing we can do is let the week go. Move on, get our money, and start over. That ain't happening. Well, something's gotta happen, and fast. Otherwise, Cornwall, them Pinkertons, they've got us pinned in here, and ain't none of them stopping. Well, Cornwall's why we're here. Shall we, Dutch? Yeah, it's time to go. Let's head to the river. Oh, leave Cornwall alone. He ain't. We need money. But revenge? Now? Of course it's for money. Come on, Art. This better not be no stupid revenge mission, Dutch. It ain't worth it. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, Arthur, it's just a simple social call. They're <laughs> lying. So, what are we going to say to him that needs to be said? He has been hunting us since Valentine. He is the reason that Hosea got killed. His sugar business is destroying the people of Guarma. This town, Arthur, is his town. He bought it just to destroy these folks. His sugar, his oil, his law. These are wrongs you can't write, Dutch. We wanted men. So why did you go for John against my wishes? I didn't want him hanged. Neither did I. We're going to cut a deal, Arthur. What are you talking about? We want out, and Cornwall wants us to stop robbing him, and we all know his money is what's keeping the Pinkertons on our tail. He's America, Arthur, and I want out, and he, he won't let us go. This ain't making a lot of sense, Dutch. It will, son. It will. A deal, some noise, and then we're gone. Cornwall's boat is due in soon. Let's get down here behind these crates. What are you doing? Get back! Arthur, I said get yourself hidden. I 
to thank you for your hospitality, Mr. Cornwall. This was a business meeting, Mr. Milton. We are not friends. I have spent a considerable fortune with your agency and still nothing. This Vanderland robs me and laughs at me. I asked for the best. I paid for the best. We are very close, Mr. Cornwall. I know you've heard this before. Can't, sir. Send a telegram to Goldberg in New York. Tell him I won't borrow it more than 3.2%. Sorry, no, I have heard it before. And get that army man to pay his portage charge. Yes, sir. We are doing all we can within the confines of the law. The law? I think we both know what you can do with your law. Find me Dutch Vanderland. Bring him here and leave the laws to them as need them. Good day, sir. Come along, Mr. Ross. We have work to do. Mr. Didsbury. Mr. Cornwall. Now listen up, Didsbury. What's all this about strikes? I bought into this mine because of mismanagement. And I intend to make it a success no matter what the cost. It's the wages. Folk feel Folk that you... feel? Business doesn't give two figs about feelings, sir. Not two figs. It's a nonsense that will bring a plague on both our houses, sir. Perhaps there is a plague on your house already, Mr. Cornwall. What do you want, sir? I'm not quite sure just yet. Your impudence will be your undoing, sir. I'm undone already. Even my best friend here, he thinks I'm crazy. And like this poor fellow you are talking to, my feelings are hurt. You robbed me, sir. And you robbed him. Funny world. You show a criminal's grasp of sophistry, sir. I did no such thing. You kill. I kill. You rob. I rob. Only difference I can see is I choose whom I kill and rob and you destroy everything in your path. I've heard just about enough. I'll tell you what, you give me this ship, $10,000 and safe passage out of here, I'll let you live. <laughs> I'll do no such thing. <laughs> you sure? Good, I prefer it this way. You lost your man! Noise, Arthur, noise! Oh, oh shit! Pinkertons! What the hell have you done, Hutch? Let's go, let's go. You 
said this wasn't a revenge mission. It wasn't. We got what we came for, those papers. All up top here, gun them down, and let's get the hell out of this place. Interesting social call. Oh, don't play dumb and superior at the same time, Morgan. We all knew sooner or later Cornwall had to go. Let me see them papers. It's more attention we don't need. Feels like the whole world's closing in on us. Dutch, it won't be long before they find where we're hiding out now. Especially as we ain't exactly hiding out. We just need a distraction. Buy us some time. It looks like Mr. Cornwall's company has signed a railroad contract with the Army. And they're also moving dynamite down from, well, the Annisburg mines to San Anita to resell. And there's bombs at his oil factory. Maybe there's a way to get them off our back and get the money that we need. Mike, you look into this dynamite. Take Bill, I guess, Arthur. You go, too. We are going to need a lot of it. And, Mike, we need to talk. Figure out some things. Of course, boss. Figure out what? The plan. Getting out of here. Nothing's changed. It hasn't, huh? There's an old house west of Van Horn. Meet me there when you can, Black Lung. Let's split up. We'll meet up back at camp. Yeah. This is crazy. I hope so. <clears throat> I want a loan, sir. A line of credit, so I can buy some property. What property? An old ranch, Beecher's Hope. <laughs> that old dump? I, I know it ain't much, but I ain't much of a farmer either. 
but I will get there. That is a very unusual way of asking for a loan. Mr. Marston. Marston. Only folk around here call me Milton. Kind of a joke, I guess. <laughs> a joke, huh? And which folk? Mr. Geddes. Uh -huh. I work for him. He said that you could help me out. I mean, if you can. So old David Geddes told you I'm the kind of man to loan a man with two names money so he can buy a rundown farm on account of his lack of farming skills, huh? Don't sound too promising when you put it like that. <laughs> well, how would you put it? Sorry to waste your time, sir. Oh, sit down. I'm sure we can figure something out. Now, of course, we'll be expecting you to make regular payments, and given a lack of much evidence you got any means of repaying, the terms won't be too great. But if my cousin vouches for you, it'll be okay with the bank. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Now, of course, we'll be expecting our money back regular as clockwork until the debt settled. Otherwise, the farm reverts to the bank, no matter how much you paid. I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you go check out the land while I fix the contracts and talk to Mr. Geddes. Oh, I heard there's squatters up there. We've been having so many problems recently. They'll need clearing on. Sure. Well, come back when you're done and we'll fix up the paperwork. Can I help you, friend? I hope so. Who's in charge here? No one, mister. This is a free country. <laughs> now that I ain't so sure about. Listen, I'm buying this land. I'm afraid... I'm afraid you guys are gonna have to go somewhere else. Who's this? I ain't sure. Some fancy dang city boy. Says he owns this land. Well, he's gonna. Owns it? That's what he says. Okay. And how come we live in here? I ain't sure. Now, as much as I'd love to pay you, I'm sure. So... Get the hell out of here! This land belongs to me now! Ain't nothing on this earth belongs to no one, partner. Looks like you made your decision then, partner! you the man with two names and no paths come on in how'd you make out well let's just say there are no more squatters okay well i got your paperwork ready now you sure about buying this place it's really run down and the price isn't too great i think it would mean a lot for my wife at least mean i was listening to her okay well sign here and here Mm-hmm. Now we own you, Mr. Marston, and we own Mr. Milton, too, and we own your property. But you can buy your freedom each week. Eventually, you will be a homeowner. I understand. Congratulations. You are now a real American, indebted and owned by the bank. 
I'm <laughs> joking. They own me. But they just own your property. Now, you can also use this line of credit for any home improvements you need to make, of course. I can? Sure. Be good, Mr. Marston. Welcome to home ownership. It's a beautiful thing. Let your wife know what to complain about. I'm <laughs> just joking. Well, it is you. Well, I never. I, I thought you was dead, boy. Dead. Uncle? The very same. Come here. <laughs> I saw you going into the bank, and by the looks of things, you ain't robbed it. I've gone straight. Oh, bull crap. No, for real. <laughs> well, I'm trying. All these years, you ain't changed a bit. Maybe a little bit. I thought you was dead. <laughs> Not yet. Well, I got some things to take care no, of. Not a problem. I'll come too. No, you don't have to. Oh, I'm real sick, John. Lumbago. It's slow and. Oh, painful. lumbago looking ass. Evidently. I got the lumbago. Have a little pity, will you? Huh? Come on, then. All right. <laughs> you gonna mount up or what? I got the lumbago. My back's killing me. Where are we headed? West. West? Ain't you a man of few words? I can see we're headed west. You know, speaking in monosyllables don't make you seem interesting. It makes you seem stupid. I don't care how I see. Well, now, where west are we headed, you damn grunting fool? This ranch, I... A ranch I bought just now. Is that what you were doing in the bank? Spending all your money? Called oh, on a ranch in the armpit of West Elizabeth. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Not that that's any of your concern, but... I was in the bank borrowing the money. Well, that's even worse. Yeah, you can run from a bounty, John. You can't run from a bank. Is Abigail there? No. She's, uh, her and Jack are waiting until I'm set up before joining me out here. <laughs> you mean she left you? Oh, I never thought she was a smart woman, but, you know, this makes me think maybe I was wrong. <laughs> no more of that. I just bought this place. You're lucky I'm showing it to you and not looking for a place to bury you out here. This is it. Look at her. I don't know who you are, so you face. Oh. Who the fuck are you? you? Shit. You gonna be disrespectful? You ain't coming up in there. Okay. What do you think? Why exactly did you buy this dump? For Abigail? Why? Is she an idiot? No. What were you thinking? I don't know. She said she wanted it. She ever seen it? What are we going to farm here? <laughs> Rocks? We? You don't have a hope here without a wise hand at the till. Enough of that. Get out of here. On your way. No. You're stuck with me. Seems I'm stuck with you. John, the rock farmer. <laughs> so... You think I'm an idiot? No. I know you're an idiot. Working hard. 
It's the lumbago. I have I overdo it. I need a relapse. It's very serious. Get up or get out. You can be so testy. What is it? Constipation? Guess you're my proof I'll never quite outrun my sins. You got so sanctimonious in your old age. No wonder she left you. It's like rooming with the King James Bible. <laughs> Get up! Ow! I, I, I'm getting up. Oh, no, what, what did I have to tell you? I, I went into town and oh, I, got, I got a little drunk. Oh, shit! Well, we gotta go. We gotta go to San Denis. Charles. Charles Smith is alive, I reckon. Charles Smith alive? Really? I, I reckon. Unless I dreamed it all and by the sound of it, not doing too good, neither. Here we are. Come on. Let's get off. All right. <sighs> Back in San Denis. I never liked this place. Oh, yeah. Oh, me neither. All right. Let's go find that big sour bastard. Sure. <sighs> Let's split up. Good idea. I'll take the saloons. You take the slope. Now, uh, how about I take the saloons? And you take the slumps. I've never done anything to you. No harm done. Hey, partner. You seen a big Indian guy? Indian? <laughs> sure. I've seen hundreds. A big guy. Boxer, maybe? Likes fighting? Yeah. Yeah. Bare knuckle guy. I think he's, he's fighting tonight over at St. Saturnine's. Thank you. Thanks a lot. No problem, bud. What took you so long? Oh, good lord. I was just beginning to enjoy some peace and quiet. <laughs> Asked that first barman I met. And he told me Charles was here. <laughs> Not one of life's great of mysteries, turns out. They hate a massacre. And you are a killer. We both know what you gotta do. I'm leaving now. He don't know the half of it. John? You're... You're... I'm alive. <laughs> so are you. <sighs> So's he. That's Uncle? What are you doing? I don't know. I'm alive. Uncle thought maybe he was in some sort of trouble. Uh, kind of. Just... I don't know. I, I'm throwing fights for a few dollars. Throwing fights? Sure. And you like that? Of course not. So... So... Let me go place a bet. Come on. Man, I thought you were dead. Sure. Abigail's still alive, too, only she left me. Uh, excuse me. I'd like to place a bet. On who? On myself, to win. Lone Wolf. How much? All of this. OK. Funny thing, I pegged you for the favorite, but the odds just got real good. What about you, sir? A uh, little wager on the wolf here? Real redskin brave. Sure, Ladies I'm a fan of the wolf. Round, Give me a bet on him. Round. Have I got a treat for you. An epic battle between the descendant of ancient warriors and a not-so-noble savage. On my left, a ferocious battler from the valleys, Simon of Wales. And on my right, an Indian Hercules. The savage, the untamable, the unbeaten, and dare I say unbeatable, lone wolf. You know how this works. No weapons, no forfeiting, no crying like a beaten child. Everything else goes. You win by knockout. You win by retirement. Or you win by death. Let's have a good fight, boys. Let's keep it clean, but not so clean. Looking small, no. Boxer, boxer. Oh, what do you see? Come on, Simon, hit him. Hit him, Robo. This is rage or something. Don't let that 
your shit. Feel that bastard. <laughs> Don't be stupid, <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Pretend he's Micah. Come on, Lone Wolf. Gotta get you the hell out of here. Hey, Lone Wolf. Whoa. How? Made my months, but you also made some fellas mighty unhappy. So it goes. Use your shit, partner. We just made the bed, I said we So you keen on staying around here or heading off with me and Uncle? But, John, I haven't seen you two in years. I know. But right now, my sense is you just need to lie low. Where? We got a little place up past Blackwater in the high country. Okay. I gotta grab my baggage. I booked a steamer heading up river. That's why I was pretending to throw the fight. Okay, boys. I'll meet you at the bridge outside San Denis. What are you doing? Well, just have a few urns of room. <laughs> You're useless. I... I'm a deep thinker. Be quick. Come on. This way. Uh, my bag's on the dock side. So, what happened? You mean back then? Arthur helped me get out. Gave me a chance to live, I guess. You, you know that Arthur... Sure. Word got to me up north, so I went back and buried him in Miss Grimshaw. I had to run. If any of us had been found, we'd have... Oh, of course. I understand. It's where he would have wanted to be. A pretty hillside, facing the evening sun. He gave me a satchel with some of his things in it. Remember that journal he always drew in? I got it. I'm a bit of a draftsman myself nowadays. He was a good man. As much as any of us could be. Getting sick like that has to rattle a fella. Rattle him or give him some kind of understanding. What his life was really all about. Yeah. That makes sense. Anyway, I heard all you were dead. Or I might have come looking. And me, the same about you. Dutch? Who knows? Dead? Maybe? I'm not sure. I heard all kind of things, but one thing I know, he ain't around here. I ain't heard nothing real in years since, well, that time. Nor me, Micah. I hope that bastard's dead. You know, he was the one speaking to them agents. What? Putting them on us the whole time. Or since before I got off Sissica, they picked up Strauss, the agents. Made a real mess of him. I heard he died in custody. Never said a word. <sighs> Guess some folk is strong in ways you can't see. Everything that happened, all those deaths. Micah? None of us is innocent in that. Dutch, least of all. But I don't think we would have had to make those calls. All that mayhem. Okay. Uh, hold on. What? Careful. Why? Those are Guido Martelli's men. Who? He, uh, he used to work for Angelo Bronte. I've only been here an hour. Hey. Uh, Come over here. What now? Well, you go left, I go right. On three. Mm -hmm. Three. <laughs> short on police. I remember that. Only too well. Anyone? Good so far. The further we get from those gunshots, the better chance we have. Of denying it, at least. 
No, we can't get caught. Martelli has the police chief in his pocket. If they take us in, we won't get out of the interview room. I don't want to get the shootout over this. That's not the man I try to be anymore. No, I don't want that either. You see anything? I think we're clear. If I ever want to go back, remind me that I hate Saint Denis. Guido Martelli will happily remind you of that. Give me some simple folk and wide open spaces. Speaking of simple. Charles! <laughs> you boys been all getting up to no good? Kind of. Been getting shot at. Well, they weren't very good shots. Come on, let's head for home. <laughs> Feels like old times. <laughs> Good to have the old gang back together again. Let's just hope things don't turn out like last time. Here he goes. What'd I tell you, Charles? Boy is as sour as weak old milk. No wonder she didn't stay with you. Not even a retired $2 whore would stay with you. That's the goddamn truth. Now, you used to be decent company, but now you're worse than a snake with a toothache. All he does is whine, whine, whine. Excuse me. Oh, don't get all angry. It ain't going to change nothing. You're hopeless. And I mean that literally. You got no hope. I mean, look at you. Look at this place. Your dream home. I've had better nightmares than this dream. Oh, darling Abigail, I've changed Come live with me in an outhouse. I wouldn't ask my worst enemy to take a shit in. What are you trying to say? It's awful. It's a dump. The house has got to go. Get some self-respect, you miserable sack of shit. Build a house a lady set foot in. The place just needs a woman's touch. It needs leveling. No woman would touch this place. Now, I reckon these horses can have it down in a minute. Here, come on. Tie that end around the horses. You loop that end around there. Horses will pull it clean down. <laughs> we good? I think so. All right. Well, <laughs> let's get going. Now, just pull. You got this, John? I'll go when you do. Come <clears throat> on. <sighs> That's it! Almost there! Ugh. See? I told you it wouldn't be no trouble. And now? Now we head into town, buy ourselves a house right out of a book. Same as if it were a bicycle. Where in town? There's a fellow by the train store. Cakes hardwood and timber. Okay, you keep working here. But if I don't go with you, who's going to tell you that? Just need a bit of peace and quiet from your incessant yapping. Charles, make him work. Whip him if you have to. Hello, Sadie. Oh, John. Come sit down. Sure. You, uh, got any work? Yeah. Well, there's always work. Whole country's getting robbed, robbing, or stopping robbers. Well, seems like there ain't much else in this world except bastards, victims of bastards, and the bastards who want to put the bastards in the ground. And which are you, exactly? Me? In my time, all three. But same as most people. I guess. Funny thing about this job, well, opportunity, I just might get to be all three again. How you mean? You ever heard of uh, Shane Finley? Cattle wrestler? Murder, thief, child killer. He's wanted in five states. I caught him last week. He was disguised as a lady in a house for fallen women. <laughs> I was bringing him in, and I got robbed by a professional rival of mine, James Langton. Oh, he's a nasty bastard. I didn't much like him even before he robbed me. That happened a lot. This line of work. Yeah, but they're all people like me. 
Anyway, now they're holed up in the desert down south, waiting to head north, so they can hand them in to the state troopers in the north country. I'd given up on the job as just a bad lot, but now that you're here, maybe we can go rob them back. Is the money good? Yeah, it's real good. Plus, I don't much like getting robbed by no one. Come on. Where is it? We're heading again, you say? Mm. South. Now, come on. Mount up. We got a ride ahead of us. Of course we do. You're a good filly. Follow me. Let's ride. Yes, ma'am. That new horse? Some folk buy ranches, some buy horses. Horses are cheaper. He looks mean. He is. My ranch? It's something else, you know. You gotta come up there. Ain't had any trouble? Some squatters, but that's it for the most part. That's good. Maybe these fellers I heard about have stayed north, or gone off somewhere else, or dropped down dead in their own tracks. It's good country. All country is good. It's just folk that are bad. You know who I got up there with me? Uncle. Besides Uncle. Abigail? Uh, Abigail ain't come there just yet. Really? You, er, wanna talk about it? Well, maybe, but Charles Smith. We found Charles Smith. Charles? He's alive? Yeah. He's doing okay. He was prize fighting in San Denis. Weren't seeming too well. He took everything real hard. But I think life on the plains is going to be good for him. I always liked Charles. You send him my best. I will. You know, you can come along, too. Build a cabin on the land. I've done that all before. Can't do it again. I'm on my own now, John. I, I ain't so good with people. Uh, the offer's there whenever you want it. That's kind. Unlikely to be taken up, but kind. You heard anything of Dutch? Nothing. You? No. You'd think he's a colorful character. Word would get out. That's one way of putting it. Look, what happened with the gang changed everyone who was a part of it. The Dutch who put a blanket around me after the O'Driscolls, they weren't the same man at Beaver Hollow. And now, he might not be so colorful no more. You see a man whose character changed. I see a man who got found out. For who he truly was. We was fools to follow him. I was a fool and I paid for it. And I was one of the lucky ones. Not good, John. Not just the one who said it all. I blame me for following Dutch for too long, but I blame Micah for most everything else. He's out there. And someday, I hope we'll find him. But not now. Come on. So, James Langton, the bounty hunter, has got this outlaw you captured in a women's boarding house? Shane Finley, correct. And we aim to have Langton give him back to us before he rides north with him to hand him over to some state troopers? Correct again. Though the giving back part is optimistic. I'm forever the optimist.
You know, I've been doing some bounty hunting of my own since I last saw you. I ain't gonna make a habit of it. We cut off here. This is the place. It's a view. Ruski. Don't let, uh, don't let them touch you in your stink eye, boy. Don't give me that stink eye, Ruski. In fact, let me put on a Ruski bed. People want to snipe me, I swear to God. Anonymous dude, you better not still be sniping me. And Russ, you guys are in it. Sorry, I appreciate that. And like, Troy is a bad me, man. I was going with that story. Lori, any different song? Guess what? I'm Trash Bill's bodyguards. You got. I'm going to And a mushroom story. haircut. Yeah, look I, at that I, beard. I, support for all of you a mol yeah i don't had somebody tell me bro sure did i'm a scumbag and i heard you try to say some shit about that i talked about Bro, we've been over this when you came over here and I apologize to you, but you keep still changing. You, you keep changing the context of what I had said to you. I was mad at you because you had let and you let stand somebody over in your chat that was talking about my mother and had the, the name is that and everything else. And I said, how would you like it if somebody said blah, blah, blah. And I said it, uh, not with your mother. I said it to your, as your wife, about your wife and you, you know, and then that's it. So, I mean, I didn't say I was going to. I mean, now, if I'm lying, run it back then. Because I know what I said. And you people can sit there and talk about I'm so emotional on this and that. Yeah, well, you know what? I just got... And, and I, I'm something I'm hearing about, people are calling me... And then they've tried to say about the other thing. Shove it. Can't say anything at all. He just sat there and just watched me. And, uh, people can come strike up, that like, part. People want to come up and they got cameras and they got their little setup. And like, here's reactions. Man. See, my only thing is, hey, is I, up, do, I, I do try to take the chat. And so does Tim. Um, there's just, just a couple that we're going to block completely because we yeah. do know all it is is negative and hate. There's nothing positive about a couple people. Um, and to yeah, move for forward, sure. why do we keep giving these people the oxygen to just spew more hate? You're talking about Snaggies, us, huh? Well, Snaggies and Mokan. I mean, these are two people that all they do. Mokan is would love probably for y'all to leave them alone. Oh my God. He's a player. Yeah, he is a player. 
bird's lies. Oh, I don't know why it says she's live and she's not. Flicking the old bean. I, I see what's going on. Hey, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm just saying. Like, well, show me your hands. Show me. Take them glasses off, Ruski. We want to see them eyes. We were talking two weeks ago, right? And he told me this shit like two weeks ago. Oh, ugly. He really told me this stuff. He was like, one of my friends came over, and I had a chick come over, I had a girl come over, and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he, was, he got mad right. because she was talking. I she's bet like, you I'm blocked. Like, he, got, he got mad at her. I she bet you I'm blocked. Uh, she told her to shut up. God damn. You were having sex and you told not. her to shut up? She must have been being loud. God. I know what that's like. What? Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a virgin. Actually. You know, he just said that he, he brought a girl over and she was talking loud and he told her to shut up. Shut up, bitch. Some, some guys don't like loud. Some guys <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh my god. No, no. Something. Oh, he just said that she was talking mm. loud. Not on StreamYard, Square. This is not StreamYard. There's no panel. She was talking loud. Yeah, I know, with your and ugly ass. Your wonk ass. Because he's like, I have a roommate. I have a roommate. I have a roommate that her account, like, they're sleeping stuff and then he and then he's and then she I guess she apologized afterwards and he's like no that's not hope that doesn't fly with me or something because he, he told me the whole conversation but i don't know it's a little, to me honestly it doesn't affect me because i can stay up all night so if you're gonna be loud all night i don't care because i'm not tired i'm not i'm not going to bed every time soon so to be honest it's kind of it kind of backfires on me he probably thinks i'm trying to sleep but i'm not sleeping i'm wide awake and everything that's what she said so Jokes on him, pretty much. Jokes on him. That's what she said, by the way. Jokes okay. on him. <laughs> and I'm not being loud. That's what she said. Okay, but anywho, I'm Say just so. saying, I'm not, I'm not going to bed anytime soon. So. Well, it's New Year's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I wish I, wish I, I, wish I had, like, I don't do what I would have done in, like, the same city or something. Like, hey, let's hang out, let's hang out or something. I hate by me bored just sitting in this house, but. Well, you're talking to me. Kind of... You can't be bored. No, no, I'm just... no, no, I mean like, no, no, I mean like, what I meant was, if I wasn't talking to you, I would just, been, I would just been laying on this bed, being bored, kind of thing. Oh, yeah. good. It's only twelve more minutes until a new year. Twelve more minutes, people. Twelve, twelve more minutes. Like twelve more minutes, and then, good night forever. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what people say when they're suicidal? Twelve more minutes and it's good. night, night forever. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I still have a whole life to live. I'm only, I'm only twenty-five. Yeah, I know how you old you are. Twenty-five, I get it. I get it. I get yeah, it. I have a long, I have a long ways to go. Yeah. And I told, I told my friend to call me back, like you know, like ten minutes ago. She never did, so I guess she's going to bed or something. I don't know. I said, call me back, call me back. She's like, okay. And she starts laughing. Okay. And she never called me back, so. I'm 42. No, I'll, just talk, I'm... I'll just talk to her tomorrow if she calls. Okay. Well, happy new year to her, too. I'm, you know, speaking of age, I'm I'm 42, but I tell 25-year-olds I'm 28. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to me. It's funny to me. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm joking. My friend, my friend makes fun of the guy that lives in the basement because he has to, he has to sleep in a basement that's cash shaped. Jesus. Hmm? Yeah, that that that's what that's what she says. She's like, oh, that guy has to. Well, someone just got someone just went to the bathroom. So, but she's like, but she's like, yeah. She goes, the guy with the cat shit. <laughs> the guy with the cat shit. Yeah, that's a freaky ass dude. He's in the scat too. He's got three sons and fucking scat addiction. He, he's a sexual maniac. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Sexual behavior, bad behavior. I'm going to leave that in 2023. I'm trying to think of things I'm, I'm trying to fix myself on. I got a lot to work on. My New Year's resolution is fix my inner self. Sorry. Uh, yeah. What's 
Wait, what was your New Year's resolution? Not to worry. Not to worry. Yeah, you got kind of hyperactive. I didn't know why. No, it's Jeff. You're good. You're doing great. <sighs> Nine more minutes, by the way. Yeah, nine more minutes. Yeah. All right, nine more minutes. And then... Uh, Actually, I don't really see the point of old New Year's, though. Like, yeah, it's, it's a new year, but we go through it every year, though. I don't see a point in holidays, period. Exactly. Fam families hate each other. We, we yeah, eat, and lunch. people eat the same damn turkey that they ate for fucking Thanksgiving. Yeah, on Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's the like, same shit. Yeah, exactly. And then you just it's like it's like deja vu. We're like repeating it over and over. There she is. Hey, hey, John. I said I I, I did my triple live thing, but I kind of left quickly. Aren't you doing a live age up without? But thank you for bringing here. I like it when age up here. Yeah. Um. I don't. Uh, well, I celebrate my birthday. I do as a as a holiday. My birthday is like my own personal holiday. But, yeah, it is. I mean, you should celebrate yourself, just like you celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. Forget New Year's. Celebrate your own birthday. You're your own. You're your own king. God, your own. Your own something. I don't know. You should self important. You know, appreciate yourself. That's what. I Eight more minutes. <laughs> Eight more, eight more minutes. God damn it! It's your, no, 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 no. Do you no, live? Do you live like in the basement of no. your brother's house? No, or it's one you of So yeah, that's my own room. See, so you, you live in the basement. You have no, your own room no, upstairs, no. or what? No, no, it's a, it's a one, uh, it's one level. Like a studio? Uh, no, it's not an apartment. Oh, uh, no, okay. A big ass house. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. So like. Do you like share it? Like he has the no, top. No, no, no. Do you have, no. or you just do whatever you want. One well, in your room, yeah. Yeah. No, he doesn't get to watch me masturbate. No, I'm okay. no. No, no, that's I'm not what I meant. No. I meant like, I'm, does, I'm doing he, jokes here. does he like? He has he has like the master, and I got the uh, background. Got my own door and shit. Yeah, my own door to the out uh, to the backyard, what, what, which leads into the weed room, and then. Backyard. Oh, I'm not joking, by the way. No, I'm not, no, no, uh, no, uh, cannabis is legal. Oh. You're allowed to have wait, a wait, you're, he has a weed room. I mean, where we go grow plants, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, like in where, where I'm from, like, uh, it's legal. So you get to grow up to what, two to four plants? Is it two plants? No, it's four. It's four plants. You get to grow four plants. Yeah. They don't sell it in like 7 Eleven and shit, but, um, but you can grow your own. And, um, there's suspensories. You have to have a card for some reason. Even though it's legal, you have to have a card. But if you're caught, oh god, if the cops stop you, if you have an ounce or under, um, they don't give a shit. If you have an ounce or oh, or like if you have uh, over an ounce, then they then then you'll get like a fine or some shit. Yeah, you'll have to go to court and get a fine. It's not like they're gonna arrest you and take you to jail immediately. No, you have to pay a fine if it's over an ounce. Um, so it's just the fine you have to pay if you don't have the card. No, if you if you don't, no, you have to have the card to buy shit. You have, uh -huh. if you, no, no, that's only to buy shit. But if you um, don't have a card, um, you like they don't give a fuck. Like if you have if, if you if you do something illegal and you have weed on you, it's like having your wallet or your cell phone. They won't give a shit. Like if you have like a ounce or, or under, like if you have a gram or an eighth or a quarter, half ounce, like they won't give a fuck. They'll give you your weed back. They won't take it. Like, yeah. Yeah. But oh, if you're I'm but so it's strict like, over there. No, it's oh like, my gosh. Yeah. Five more minutes. Hap, 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 happy new year. Damn, someone else. How many times do people have to go to the bathroom? Like, fuck. Little square top here. Um Jeez. Yeah. So, all right. Um, yeah, I drove a blank. All right. So, are we? I, I, hope this, I hope this New Year is way better than this year. Yeah, so this year was kind of, uh, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was all right. It was okay. It was, uh, 
mm, whatever. It was a, mm, you know, I met some people. It was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. For you, um, yeah, it was, it was okay. It was okay for me. I met, well, I met it, it was okay in the beginning, but at the end, it was like, ugh. I worked a lot in the beginning and in the middle and towards, well, like, uh, I worked a lot, like, I had a job of fucking busting my ass off. It's kind of rough, actually. Yeah. I was I was working 12 hour days. Four more minutes. Four more minutes. You are counting down the time. Look at you. Do you have a look at clock? Yeah, because I'm looking at my, my, Your phone? my clock. I'll, I'll, count the, I'll count the second sound with you. Because, uh. And I'm, I'm just, oh, just, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just want a better year. Like I'm just praying that this year is way better than last year. I mean, this year, this year was horrible. I feel like on the even, the even years, like my, you know, my, you know, they're not too bad, mm. but like on the odd years, they're like horrible. Odd years are horrible. Even years are okay. Yeah, that that that's what it feels like. You know, it feels like the even years are like good and the odd years are bad. I don't know what what about odd years. But I think the number three is evil. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I don't like the number well, three. I think the number three wow. associates with like the devil and stuff. Yeah. So I think that's why. Six six six. By the way. Oh, six? I thought it was three. Well, no, check it out. Well, six six six. Well, then, Guess how many sixes are there? There's three. There's three sixes yeah. and six, six, six. Okay, well, then three is three, just three, bad luck, I guess. <laughs> People think it's good luck for some reason because I guess everybody on the internet is stupid. Four, four is definitely like a better a better number. <sighs> three is definitely not the way. Fuck <laughs> no. It is definitely not the goddamn way. Whoever told you that is going straight to hell. Yeah. Uh, man. Yeah, you know. Three more minutes. Oh, don't say that number. No, it's two. <laughs> now let me know what's when when it's the one. When it's, it's eleven. It's eleven fifty-eight. It's eleven fifty-eight. Yeah. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ten fifty-eight here. For this year to be over. You got a minute and a half. Yeah. Come on, go. <laughs> Get the fuck out and don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> Gee, that's right. Well, I mean, I, I met you this year, so, you know. Well, I guess that was pretty cool, but Yay. the other shit that I was going through was just horrible. Yeah, yeah tell me about it. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Oh, good. I, I'm hoping this year is a better year. 2024? 2024, 2024 better be my year. It's an election year in, in America. Is it really? Yeah. Uh, for the president of the United States, yeah. Uh, oh, shit. One more minute. <laughs> one more minute, people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're coming up at 12, right? What? Are we coming up at 12? Uh, I mean, yeah. All right. Cool. No. You first. <laughs> I, already, I already kept my promise about video yeah. chatting. <laughs> no, you good. I, mean, I, I know it was a promise, but okay, I'm going to have to make a promise. He's fucking. I'm gonna smoke a cigarette in a second. Pan. Like uh, oh, no shit. Ah. Is it three seconds? I don't even know because, well, I hear you laughing. I, you know, it's better to hear you. You were like anxious all day. I'm glad you're laughing. You seem like you're in good spirits now. I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's laughing at your ugly ass. That's, that's right. Okay, nine what seconds. Is it really nine seconds? Wait, all right. Yes. Eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year, lady. It's not, it's not here yet. Happy New Year. Yes, yesterday is over. All right, I'm going to do one of these. I'll start it off. Boom. There you go. You still got an hour. Oh, yeah, I forgot. There you go. Hey. Oh, there you are. Hey. Oh, okay. That's what you look like. Sunglasses. Oh, you said you wear glasses? I said, what's with the sunglasses? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's it's very bright in my room. You want me to take them off or something? Yeah, can I see your eyes? You want to see my eyes? <laughs> would you be, would you be weird out if I said one of them's lazy? No. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Damn.
<laughs> She's like, oh, not what I, it's like not what I expected. God damn it. No, no, no. That's not what I did. That's not what, that's not what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. I, I look to the right, Ruski, and they'll be straight. Oh, sorry, look necklace. look yeah, to the right, and they'll be like straight. That, yeah. They'll um, straighten yeah. up if you look to the I think right. It's Calvin Klein. Give us that eye. Uh, isn't Calvin Klein like the hardest, like the expensive brand or something? Yeah, yeah, Calvin Klein, uh, matching bracelet. Yeah. Oh, Gucci's expensive. Oh, you, oh, you mean these? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Are they really Gucci? <laughs> Dude, they're they're like expensive. Though. These they're were like, these were three hundred. Really? Yeah, th these were almost as much as these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got a third. What? 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 what oh, Nike, Nike, Nike is expensive. All those brands are so expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like or these. Bob or whatever. Hold on, these are almost the same exact pair. There you go. Got these right here. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah I spend my money on stupid shit. Um, <laughs> that like me. Yeah. Well, I spend my money on like six dollar coffees, and I know it's expensive, but Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year. It's <sighs> finally two minutes into this day. Yeah. And I actually feel pretty good. I'm gonna jinx it though, but yeah. Okay. But, yeah, I hear a lot. I hear a lot of walking around up there. <laughs> you know what they're doing up there? <laughs> they're walking is what they're doing they're walking that, that's that's it that's, that's all they're doing no but i hear like a lot of people like footsteps i hear a lot of that well someone has to be the cameraman <laughs> <laughs> well whatever they're doing i don't want to know i got jokes i got jokes i got you yeah, probably well, they're I'll, playing twister I'll, I'll, all i can say is whatever they're doing i don't want to know what's going on oh, you definitely don't want to know no, I'll tell you what's going on. They're playing Adult Twister. <laughs> they probably are. Yeah. Right foot in the groin. Yeah, that's right. Adult. Well, they have Twister and then they have Adult Twister. <laughs> I, I, I thought I made that up. Okay. Do they really? They probably do. Yeah, there's. Well, no, I'm just saying there's Twister for kids. What do you know about Adult tw Twister? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what do you, you know do on your free I, time? You know, you know what I mean when I say yeah. adult twister? Yeah. It's <laughs> no, I have no idea. Explain this to me. Oh, it's like a sexual version of twister. You know, no, the, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to do there's a non, There's a non-sexual one and there's a sexual one. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you want to talk about the sexual one. I'm kidding. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm just saying they, they probably are doing the adult twister. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know this conversation was gonna be X rated. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well no, you just you just brought up Twister, so I'm yeah. just I'm just saying that's probably what they're doing. They, they, I I've been saying it all, all this entire conversation. I mean they could have they could have prayer sessions and Bible study. They might. You know. Maybe. They, or maybe they're just smoking me and drinking. No, oh, that sounds good. Who knows, who knows what they're doing? But I don't really care to be honest. To be honest, I haven't heard. I haven't heard the guy in the basement. Ever since I've been home, I haven't heard him. So I don't know if he's, he's smoking weed. Out. He's definitely smoking weed right now. I don't know, unless he went outside to smoke a cigarette. I, I usually hear him. Usually, I can hear him coughing. So I don't know. Hmm. I think you well, need. I think you need to smoke weed yourself. Tell you the truth, you need to get well, high. You do. I you guess know. it would help me. Yes. Well, I'm not, not going to smoke it in his house though, because that this isn't my house. Oh, no, well, you need edibles, right? Yeah. Or take edibles and then yeah, I do that. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard the guy at all downstairs. I don't know where he is. Not, like but, some people don't look at like the New Year's as a, as a big thing. I went to sleep last year, like at nine o'clock at night, like last year. Well, maybe maybe he's sleeping. Unless he maybe he went with his friends. I don't know. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I'm not. I'm not gonna go down there and check because it's. I can't. It'd be. I can't be going down there. It's not my. Like that's his place to run. So I can't go down. I can't do that. Yeah. I'm not gonna go down there and be like, hello, you there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not. Uh, you know. Oh, weren't you gonna do that? You were gonna talk to him about. Um... Oh, yeah, I was gonna talk to him, but. Yeah. I don't really wanna do it right now because 
you know, there's people in the house. I don't really want people. You know, I, 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 I don't know. Wait till next year. Wait a minute. Never mind. Wait till it wait. Is, it, is. it is next year. I wait. Well, I guess I go wait till later on today. Yeah. Damn. Did you hear that? That, that was dumb. I, I heard a big ass thump. I did. Yeah, that one. I told you they're playing choice. You know what I mean? I told you. See, no one believes me. No one believes me. I don't yeah, lie. I believe it. I believe it. Okay. Like, when I was on the phone, before the video chat, I was on the phone, and I heard, I, like, I keep hearing people going to the bathroom. I'm like, hmm. do you really have to go to the bathroom that much? No, they're doing cocaine. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. If you hear a glass drop, it was a mirror. I didn't hear anything. They just keep going back and forth. Back. The, I, I I hear footsteps, and and you're on a phone, and I hear footsteps. Like I hear footsteps from yeah, I definitely hear. See, I told you, yeah. I told you, they're being loud. They're being loud. See, it's twelve midnight. Well, you know, I mean, they're getting. Well, when you drink a lot, I don't know if you. Um, I mean, I have the problem. If I drink a lot, I have to go to the bathroom a lot. My age. Oh yeah. It's an American thing, I think. Well, like, yeah, but the know. thing is, the thing is, though, like. It's not, it's pretty much a joke on him because I'm awake right now. So I don't know when I'm going to go to sleep. But like the fact that he, like, I want him to realize that, like, it's not a big deal. Like, if I can handle the noise, he can handle the noise. You know? I mean, I can go to sleep at any time. I fell asleep on you. Sorry about, <laughs> sorry about that. I like, I didn't, like, I woke up and the phone was hung up. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. No, I'm not, okay. yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not going to. I don't care. I don't, I don't make a big deal about stuff like that. No, but, you know. Yeah, I was like, um, I was all calm and relaxed, and then I was like, except I, I was, yeah, I was like, actually laying down. I was actually like, you know, so I laying down. I was, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna go. I'm gonna go and try and see how many shoes are in the front door there. <laughs> Do people and take you take your shoes off when you? Uh... Yeah, I, I, I want to go out there and just actually see it, make sure that they didn't touch my <laughs> shoes, but I don't want to go out there in case they come downstairs. Be like, I don't, I don't want to interact with these people. Be like, you want to party? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go check to make sure that they didn't pamper out with my stuff because I don't really like that. Because I go to two, but I have two pairs of out there. I don't want them like, playing, I don't want them touching them, you know? I think they're going to put your shoes on their hands and use them as sock puppets. That's what You got some sickos out there, I'm just saying. What jersey is that? It's definitely not the year you were born. Happy New Year. Oh. Oh. oh, it's bright over there. Jesus Christ, Flora, that's some lighting. Oh my God. That's a white light, dude. Oh. You said you gotta go to the bathroom? Oh, I get to, I get to watch you pee? Cool. No, I guess not. Finally, finally, I hear someone pee. I always wanted to do that. Don't worry, I can't hear you pee at all. It's hot. Happy New Year, Elise. Happy New Year. Happy New Year from, from the DC. I'm just gonna like, I'll call you right back, okay? Uh, give, me, uh, give me a call back. Okay, cool. All right. That was a fun conversation. All right. With that said, I'm taking a break. I'm going to smoke this. No one leave. I'm going to take a break. I'll enjoy that. That was fun, right? That was good. It's good. It's good times. Good times. I thought Elise left. Elise left. 
Say that thought that say that three times fast. All right. That that just proves I need a cigarette break. It's been a long day. Yeah. Why do people I want to see your eyes? No. No. No, by the way, that was the first time we actually came out and saw each other. So smoke a cigarette. I'm back. In the meantime, go fuck yourself. Bring it Forgot the rest of the words. Ugh. It's my lighter. Ah, damn. Some people did, I guess. Oh. Yeah. All right. God damn it. <sighs> Hello, everyone. I'm back. No, I'm fucking... Happy New Year, Elise. Happy New Year, Mustard Squirrel. Happy New Year, Latinx person. Happy New Year. Mimi Wilson, who the fuck? Never heard of you. Oh, yeah. but you're cool. Happy New Year, Square, if you're still watching. Square was in my chat, but he oh. hid me in his. Oh, it didn't. I guess I'm unlikable. Nobody else it's wants to have all five six. Square, you'll. Square, unhide me, little guy. I'll right. unlock it, but I don't think I'll unlock you. Square, out. hmm. It it goes. It goes. It goes. It goes very well. Square loves chicken mouth. Square is sniping, not commenting. Oh, well, no. whatever. He can snipe. That just show, you know what I think about snipers. They're cucks. They like to watch and beat it. That's what they like. It's okay. That means I'm entertaining. And Square likes to beat off his pizza guys. I guess he does. Hi, Square. Hello, how are you? Strike him. You strike him. I don't give a fuck. He's mad because I'm talking to a chick and he's watching me talk to a chick. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> He can't talk to chicks because no women likes him. <laughs> he can't meet women all the time. <laughs> oh, what a loser. <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> oh, man. Only chicks he gets are like crazy ones and shit. Well, I guess me too, really, if you think about it. Uh, well. Interview with Kayla. Who? What? Who the fuck is Kayla? No, I think I've seen the Kayla around. All right. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's funny. Square will you meet a chick offline. <laughs> he said he even the chick wanted to meet him. He said he won't. He's that paranoid. He's scared of women. That's why that's why no chicks go on his fucking lives anymore. Ah uh, shit. <laughs> and I have women all the time. Come on, my lives. Jealous Square. That's right. Thank God the chick wasn't catfishing. She actually looks as attractive on her profile pic as she does when she cammed up. Cool. I was kind of worried about that. He's he's scared of Petey's closet. The fuck? What's in Petey's closet? What? That's an odd comment. All right. Mommy is disappointed. Is it? Momo. Wait, what? Mommy or Mo Oh, wait. Hold on. Did, hmm. I misread that. That doesn't say mommy. That says another name. What are you trying? No, no, it does say mommy. Okay. Mommy, mommy. I, see. I don't even want to know what that means. I think I have a good idea what that means. But I'm scared of pee. All right, I guess everybody is scared of PD. Who cares? I mean, not me. I'm, I'm not BH. Yeah. All right. Well, what does that say for? I don't even care. It means. All right, I'm not saying that name. Hey, it's it's the new year. Can we not be disrespectful? Not even a square. There is no link. Obviously, this is not a stream. Do people know how YouTube works? I'm not on StreamYard or Streamlabs. I can't give a link. It's uh, through my webcam, guys. Yeah, this is webcam, not StreamYard. Damn, damn, it's correct. No, Snaggy's still here. Holy shit, look at Snaggy. Snaggy, you're not well-liked, are you? People keep talking shit about you. Can't associate myself with that. No, I'm kidding. You're you're welcome here. I guess I'm trying to be more open to people. I'm trying to be as hard because I hate everybody. You know how it is. People suck. Nope. Positivity. Let's try to be positive. Let's try to. No, oh, there's Derek. Hey, Derek. Happy New Year, Derek. Oh, you're in. You're in, are you Eastern Standard Time? I know you're in Canada. You're Eastern Standard Time. Snaggy's using the, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's nice. I don't care about the troll community. Happy, but since you mentioned it, happy New Year to Carolina Rebel. Redneck bastard. It's all right, man. Yes, you are used to the same time. Yes, yeah, I knew that, Derek. I knew that. Hopefully, you had a, you're having a good new. Is is everyone having the new year? That we're 19 minutes in. And my new year is going great so far. Let's talk to a chick. Yeah, that's how I brought in the new year. Anybody ever fuck on like right when the bell hit? Right when right when it turned new. Besides me. Fuck on you. No, just me. All right, just me. Did the chick peep? What? Did the chick peep? <laughs> oh, that's supposed to be a joke. It wasn't funny. So when do the strippers? <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. How do you know I get strippers? Shut up. I have, you have a weird kink. You like strippers? All right, there. I'm, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. There's like a bunch of numbers in it. Want to know what it, you seem like a stripper. <laughs> All right. This guy says, I'm not even trying to pronounce your name. This guy says, you seem like a stripper. Kind of. A, I mean, I, I don't object. I, I don't. However, Chris Rock was wrong. There is sex in this champagne room. There is. My name is Amber. Okay, well, hello, Amber. Are you Amber Alert? 
or Amber Alert. You think I'm a dude? You know, uh, uh, sorry, now I got to check out your channel now. You're going to make me do all this shit. Uh, I don't know. I thought you were, yes, the answer is yeah. I thought you were a dude. Yes. Oh, okay. You're okay. Now I get it. Yeah. Oh shit! There's your profile pic. I didn't look at it. You got tits, or you have tattoos. Oh, oh shit! You're like a YouTuber. Okay, yeah, you're a chick. Oh, well, I'll be goddamn. All right. You paid that 500. Wait, what? For what? Nope. I remember. Nope. There is if you pay for it. Five, oh, well, uh, I mean. Uh, Get for, for free, girl. No, actually, in Florida, in Florida, you go to a strip club, man. Twenty bucks will get you a blowjob. I don't know that. I heard <laughs> that never happened, but I hear things. Yes, you're you're a lady. You, apparently, you're you are a woman, and you have tattoos on your titties and cleavage. I mean, what you have tattoos? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Your name is Amber, but you used a four as an A. I get it. All right. I get it. This is, of course, it's fun. Square loves chicken bones. Square loves chicken bones. Can you go into Square's live and say hello for me? That'd be nice of you. Cafe Risque. Oh, that sounds like cool. Florida's famous for Cafe Risque. Uh, I went to what? I forgot the. Was it um, Bordewa? No. I forgot, I forgot the name of the strip club I used to go to a lot. Uh, yeah. I'm No, you're not blocked because I'm reading your comments. No, you're not blocked. I see it says I'm blocked and you're not blocked because I'm reading your freaking comment. So what community are you a part I'm part of my own community. You are in my community. That's right. Give it a goog. All right. You want me to give it a goog? I'll do that later. Cafe Risque is where square. <laughs> You're lying. They want to allow Square in the strip club, okay? He's creepy. <laughs> oh, you're blocked at Squares. Okay, who cares? I wish I had my own community. Well, you're a part of this one now. I mean, what do you mean you wish you had your own? You have like a, over a thousand subs. Hold up. You... Are you monetized? Like, you damn have, well have enough. Uh, uh, you have enough. Um, you have enough uh, subs to get monetized. You have enough, Do you have any? How many I watch timers yet? Fucking Mercy is gonna go on top of me. You fucking. No, I'm kidding. Oh wait. She, eh, eh, all right, whatever. I'm not mad. I'm not. I'm not upset. Yes, I'm on the so of course you are. Yeah. I have almost two cases. So yeah, yeah, I notice. Yeah. I'm going to sub to your channel so you get one more. I'll sub to your channel. Why not? You seem like a nice lady. So I'll definitely sub to your channel. How did you find my channel? Oh, you said controller. So you... I know who you know. You know... um. You know Shannon, I think. I think. If I got the community right. I think I got the community right. Yeah. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> nope, that's not it. All right. Shannon, I think. Uh, and controller knows. Shannon. 
Let's see. Yeah, channel. All right, I'm gonna plug your channel. And hit the bell for all notifications. Okay. I have six hundred seven. Okay, you're getting up there, Derek. Good for you. Good for you. You. I mean, you could get the uh, the lower tier monetization, Derek. If you have three, uh, if you have. What three thousand watch hours? Yeah, yeah. You can get the if you have three thousand watch hours and five hundred subs, you can get monetize. I'm waiting until I get a thousand. I'm almost there. I'm at seven hundred and twenty-five subs. Hit the like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for doing that. I'm gonna check on myself. I got. I need to know. I like to keep up with my analytics. I'm a numbers guy. Yeah. It's because I'm Asian. Someone unsubbed. Son of a bitch. Not a nice person. Yeah, that's not cool. Whatever. All right. Shani for Christ. I don't know her, but I have heard of her. Oh, no, no, not the same person. Not who I'm thinking of, actually. Shani for Christ. No, not different Shani. Um, no. Actually, I know two Shannies. One's actually Shannon, and then another chick is Shani, but her actual name is Shannon. Mm. Square hates me, and her. we only talk to, well, you know. Square may not like you because it's... Because your name says Square loves chicken bones. So uh, I have no idea why Square would dislike you. Maybe it's because of your name. Risky, have you noticed my. <laughs> um, hold on, dude. Hold on now. What are you, what, what's going on here? <laughs> hold on here. Let me get a close up of your avatar, you son of a. Right there. That that avatar not better. Oh, God damn it! Better not be. I think it is. No, it's my face. Funny. I think that's my face on top of Andrew's nipples. All right, good avatar. That was creative. Yeah, son of a bitch. That's funny. <laughs> Way to bring in the new year there, bud. <laughs> it is that <laughs> probably should have never made Andrew's nipples my fucking avatar. You took that and you put my face on it. Okay, I see, I see what you did there. Can you send me that photo? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it my avatar. You took. I guess I deserve that one. So you took <laughs> took Andrew's body and you put my face on top. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I I even think that's fine. I'm not even gonna hide you for that. I won't even hide you for that. That's funny as shit, dude. <laughs> Are you? Are you trying to low key porn bomb me with that avatar? I mean, you can barely see it, so I don't go for it. I don't think I even have live chat. Uh, I don't think this the live chat's even gonna pop up, so so I'm not even gonna fucking take this shit down. I love my name, <laughs> and apparently, Amber likes her own nipples. So, Amber, can I see your nipples, or what's going on here? Oh, are you Ka Kaparo? Is that you? You motherfucker. Kaparo, that's you. Of course that's you, Kaparo. Of course that's you. <laughs> Kaparo, you son of a bitch. Hi, Kaparo. 
You really took Andrea's body and put my face on it. I should have never made her my fucking out. You son of a bitch. See now she now you have now she has a reason to fucking hate you. Andrea is <laughs> keep coming with the <laughs> Oh, Square's striking me with no banner. Oh, I'm definitely striking him, man. I'm going to strike him right now, actually. Fuck it. Wait, he thinks I'm not going to strike him? Why would he do that? He's a fucking idiot. You think I'm not going to strike him with no banner? Come on now. Now I got him. Let's give him a strike. Why not? It's good. Too. What is it? What's his, uh, what's his handle? Square's a loser? Square is a loser. All right. Let's see. Where's the channel at? Square works mini 322. All right. Hold on here. There we go. Boom. Got it. All right. Hit it. And all right. Let's report it. Clicky, clicky. And then one of these. Just like that. And port. Uh, there it is. Got it. Uh, just like one of the others. Aha. Got it. Then we do one of those. That's it. All right. Cool. That one's funny. All right. Now I got to check out this channel. I'm just going to check out every goddamn channel. Hope you enjoy live. That's how I find it. Oh, okay. You're welcome, Caparo, you son of a bitch. Now get the fuck out of my channel. Go in the squares. I'd rather have you there. I don't like you, Caparo. Now you're okay, I guess. Not really. You suck. You're okay. See you in bipolar. I don't know if I love you or hate you. You blocked me. Well, I don't give a shit. Go over there anyways. All 83. Oh. He does not have 83 alts. Caparo, I think you have 83 alts. Do you have like a lot? What time is it? Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I thank, thank you, Mustard Squirrel. I, I got it. You're good. Go report on yourself. Let's all report square. Let's have a, let's have a report square party. Let's do that. I already, I started off. Now you go. Get out of my chat. Go, 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 go. Get out of here. Don't hit the, don't forget to hit the like button. All right. I'm gonna go make coffee. Watch the wall. Right. I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'll be back.